Hello friends, trees is one of the most important data structures as everyone must know it. And in this video, I'm going to give you the most popular trees questions of all time. They have been asked at bunch of big and small companies and they have been popular throughout. So good luck with your preparation and hope you find this video useful. Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fine company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do maximum depth of binary tree lead code problem. And if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like LinkedIn, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, Bloomberg, and Uber. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code easy problem and also very well liked problem on lead code. If we understand the problem statement, basically we are given the root of a binary tree and we need to return its maximum depth. Now we are also given the definition of what a maximum depth is. It is basically the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down towards the farthest leaf node. That is the depth of the tree. And uh, if we try to understand this with an example, suppose we are given a tree over here that looks like this. In this case, the maximum depth is going to be three. Why? Because the nodes at the root level is currently at position 1 or height 1 uh, the root at this level is at uh, depth 2 or height 2 and root at this level is actually at depth 3 so in this case we need to return 3 as the answer because 3 is the maximum depth we can get from this root node so let's see that what would be the different approaches to solve this problem Okay, suppose this is the input we are given and we are trying to find the maximum depth for this particular given tree. Suppose this is the root of the tree. If you want to find the maximum depth for this tree, the answer is going to be 4 because of these two nodes. Uh, we can see it clearly over here that over here the value is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4 and this is the answer we need to return. The question is, before we return this answer, we will actually have to build some intuition behind it. And the intuition is, suppose at this position number 5, if we want to determine that what is the maximum depth over here, well, what we can do is we will check on the left side, we will check on the right side. And whatever has the greater number of nodes uh, on either side, we will actually take that as maximum depth and we will do it uh, plus 1. Well, in this case, the 6 and 7, both are located at the same position, 6 and 7, none of them has any children, which means that over here, we can determine that this is actually one and this is also one so on the left side and on the right side both values are actually one so what we can do is we can do one plus one so one plus one will give us the answer that the maximum depth has at position number five is going to be two so in this case okay we have found the maximum depth over depth over here to be two well if we take this value number four well at this value number four it does not have any more children if it does not have any more children which means we can determine the maximum depth in this case is going to be one well, now we have these two values that now based on these two values, it becomes pretty easy for us to identify that what is the maximum depth at this position number two. All we will have to do is we will take whatever the maximum value amongst these two is maximum value is actually two. So what we can do is we can do two plus one and two plus one is actually going to be three. So we can determine that three is going to be the maximum depth we can achieve at this node number two if this was to be the root of the given tree and for this position number three the maximum depth we can achieve is only one because it does not have any more children uh, so that is a given fact now we have these two information now it becomes pretty easy for us to identify that what is going to be the maximum depth at this position number one and uh, we all we will have to do is take the maximum amongst these two values so maximum value is going to be three and all we need to do is just plus one so if we do three plus one we will get the answer four and four would be the correct answer in this case and that is what we are going to return so the maximum depth we need to find we can simply do it by using this method well uh, now if you see for this particular solution we are actually able to achieve this solution uh, but what we are doing is that at any given position we are seeing that what is the left max value or right max value and whichever is greater amongst e either one of them we are taking that and we are adding one one now again uh, we are repeating the same process that we are taking the left max and right max value and uh, we, again we are adding one so which means that in order to solve a bigger problem we are actually so, uh, solving a smaller problem and then again a uh, smaller problem so basically we we are doing recurs we are doing it recursively and that is how we are going to solve this problem using recursion which is very powerful and it is highly used in different kinds of tree tree problems so that is how we are going to solve this problem and this would be the optimal solution we can use uh, if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n because we will have to iterate over every single element in order to get the answer and if we see the space complexity in this case the space complexity is also going to be big o of n because we might have to store all the values inside our 
recursive function and uh, this approach is actually very good it works as expected there is also one more approach which uses tags and that does not use recursion it actually use uh, iterative function so let me know in the comments if you want to see the stack solution as well and i can also explain that but for now if you show this recursive solution in, in any interview the interviewer would be more than happy uh, so let's move on to coding now so first of all we are going to take care of our edge case if that is not the case we will have to call our recursive function first of all we are going to have an integer called left max that is going to take care of the left subtree for any given root position and we are going to call our recursive function again and same we are going to do for the right subtree as well we are going to create a parameter called right uh, max and in either case all we have to do is simply return whatever the maximum value we, we are able to find and then we will add one to it and this should be it uh, once we get out of the loop our solution would be done so let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working let's submit this code and our code runs as expected and it's actually pretty fast compared to a lot of other solution so i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do same tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like LinkedIn, Amazon, Google, Bloomberg, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook and Uber. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code easy problem and as the name suggests same tree the problem is self explanatory but let's go over it that basically we are given two roots of a binary tree called p and q and we have to write a function to check if they both are same or not. So let's try to understand this with couple of examples that are given over here. Over here, here we are given this two trees p and q and in this case we see we can see that both of these are one both of these are two and both of these are three. So we can say that okay they are actually same and we can return true in this case. But for the second example, if we see the P and Q values over here, uh, for 1, 1 is same. So root values are same. Uh, but if we see over here, this is actually 2 and this is actually 2. Despite being the same value, the positioning is not same. Because this is actually the left child of this given uh, P tree and this is actually the right child of this given Q tree. Which means that these two are not same. So in this case, we will return the false. And this is what we have to achieve. So let's see that what would be the different approaches to solve this problem. So solution of this problem is actually quite simple and if we see the approach one we are going to use an iterative approach. In the iterative approach what we are going to do is we are going to iterative over both of these given trees in the same manner and we are going to keep on checking subsequent uh, nodes of every single position. At any given moment if we identify that any single node does not match we can return false immediately and if somehow we can reach out to the end of the tree and uh, iterate over every single nodes we can return true in this case. So let's see that in action uh, so first of all we are at this p for this p and q tree uh, currently we are at this root position so we will check that value and both of them are actually one which means we are good so far now we are going to iterate over on the left side so on the left side this value is actually two and this value is also two so again we are good now again on the left side this value is actually three and this value is also three so again we are good so far now we go back and now uh, for this position number uh, we also have a right subtree or so we will check that right position this is 5 and this also has a right position which is also 5 so so far we are good now again we go back to this root node uh, we still have this uh, right side that we haven't traversed so this node is 4 and this node is also 4 so again we are good and at the end this node is 6 and this node is 6 now we don't have any more nodes to go back to so essentially we have traversed over all the nodes inside wo given both the trees so we can return true in this case and this is the approach we are going to take uh, let's see what would happen in a scenario where trees don't match up so here i have drawn that example as well that over here all of these nodes are same uh, but 
actually this node and this node these two are not same so because these two are no, not same the moment we iterate over all of these nodes and eventually we would reach to these positions we can return false immediately in this case so this approach would work as expected and if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n why big o of n because we will have to iterate over every single node inside the given tree for both uh, p and q trees and the space complexity would be big o of log n that is because this is a binary tree well in the second approach we are actually going to solve this problem recursively and the idea is at any given moment we have to identify that whether two given two trees are same or not the thing we are going to do is we are going to compare the root nodes if they both are same we will have to compare their entire left subtrees uh, that where they have to be the same and also we will have to compare their entire right subtrees that as they are, they also have to be the same and if that is the case we can define that tree to be the same but if we take a look at for the left subtree again we are going to repeat the same process that even for the left subtree we are going to compare the root nodes if they both are same then we are going to compare their left subtrees and their right subtrees to be the same so essentially we are doing the same thing repeatedly for different kinds of input and recursion is the best way to approach that uh, and also your interviewer is going to uh, expect you to do this recursively because that would be more efficient way of doing it uh, so let's see that in action so the idea is at any given moment we are going to compare the root node so over here root node is same because root node is same we will have to check that whether the left subtree is same and right subtree is same or not so first we will do the left subtree so now for the left subtree we have these two trees for p and q respectively so again we will check the left node so left node is this 2 and this is also 2 so they both are same now we are going to check the left subtree and right subtree again so this both of these are 3 so they are we are good now we will have to check the right subtree so right sub, subtree is also 5 and 5 so again we are good now again so far we have calculated the entire left portion but we haven't calculated the right portion so now we will do that so again for the right subtree this value is 4 and this value is 4 so again they both are equal so we are good so far and then these values are 6 and 6 so again we are good so far now we have iterated over every single node recursively that is the important part and we have found all the values to be the same so because they were same we can return true in this case and everything is good and at any given moment suppose we identify that any single node does not contain the same value as its uh, counterpart then the moment we are comparing these two values we can return false immediately and that would be the solution for this problem if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is also going to be big o of n because we will have to iterate over every single value and the space complexity is going to be big o of log n so the time and space complexity is not different than the iterative approach but recursive approach just is a lot less coding and i will also be showing that in the code so first of all we are going to check that if the given p and q both are null if both are null we will have to return true because essentially they both are same if that is not the case and if any of uh, either p or q is null and the other one is not null then in that case we will have to return false and if both values exist then we will have to compare their values and if both values are not same we can return false immediately if that is not the case we will have to iterate over left and right subtrees of a subsequent p and q trees so now we are going to make our recursive call and that's pretty much it let's try to run this code okay seems like our code is working as expected let's submit this code and our solution runs pretty efficiently it's actually 100% faster but if that is not the case because runtime is 0 millisecond that's why it's showing 100% faster i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there Hello friends, we are not employed by a fine company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do invert a binary tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to work at who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google, Apple, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Uber, Goldman Sachs and LinkedIn. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. 
सो दिस इज द लेट कोड इजी प्रॉब्लम एंड ऑल्सो वेरी वेल लाइक प्रॉब्लम ऑन लेट कोड बेसिकली वी आर गिवन द रूट ऑफ अ बाइनरी ट्री एंड वी नीड टू इन्वर्ट द ट्री एंड रिटर्न इट्स रूट बैक सो लेट्स ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस विद कपल ऑफ एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील टेक दिस एग्जाम्पल सो ओवर हियर वी आर गिवन अ ट्री दट लुक्स लाइक दिस वेर दिस टू वन एंड थ्री आर पार्ट ऑफ द ट्री वेर वन इज द लेफ्ट चाइल्ड एंड थ्री इज द राइट चाइल्ड सो इफ वी इन्वर्ट दिस ट्री वी विल गेट एन आंसर दट लुक्स लाइक दिस वेर टू रिमेन्स द रूट बिकॉज इट इज द रूट नोट बट दिस थ्री दैट वॉज ओरिजिनली द राइट चाइल्ड विल बिकम द लेफ्ट चाइल्ड and this one that was originally the left child will become right child and this is what we need to return let's take a little bit more complicated example so over here we are given the root to be 4 now we are given that the left child and right child of this 4 is actually 2 and 7 and further down we are given more left child and right child for this 2 and 7 as well now if we invert those all of them we will actually get a result that looks like this where 4 remains the common uh this 7 that was originally the right child will become the left child and this 2 that was originally the left child will become right child and same thing will happen for these leaf nodes as well and this is the answer we need to return in the answer this is what the problem is asking us to do let's see that what would be the different approaches to solve this problem before we come up with the optimal solution let's understand a very important concept suppose this is one of the kind of a binary tree we are given and we need to invert this tree well if we see over here we are given a root node then again we are given some left child and we are given a right child now further down for this left child and right child they also have the children of their own and they also form a bigger binary tree so at any given moment suppose we are given this root node we are given this left child and we are given this right child so if we want to invert this tree all we have to do is whatever this right child is and whatever this left child is if we just swap them or if we invert them basically we are at least done with this root level and with this left child and right child level now again if we further break down that uh, suppose this is the left child now we are treating this left child as a root so suppose now this is the root and this is the left child and this is the right child for this root so again if we want to invert them what we can do is we can take whatever the left subtree and right subtree is so in this case for this root the left subtree is going to be this the right subtree is going to be this if we swap them uh, essentially we have taken care of up until this level for this uh, inverting part and same way we can keep on repeating the process so now this becomes our root again we flip these two values and even for this level we have taken care of inverting the binary tree so this is what exactly i am suggesting us to do in order to solve this problem that we we starts breaking this given input into bunch of uh, smaller inputs and start inverting binary tree in that manner so the idea is that for every single time uh, we will have a root node we will swap its left and right child then again for if there exist any left or right child we will repeat the same process and keep on swapping those values which means that we are actually doing uh, doing the changes recursively recursively we can actually solve this problem pretty efficiently uh, let me quickly show you how suppose this is the input we are given and we are trying to invert this binary tree recursively so what we are going to do is suppose we will take initially this as the root node and for this root node we actually have a left child and we actually have a right child so what we are going to do is we are going to swap its values and we are going to swap the entire left subtree and entire right subtree then at any given moment uh, as long as we have some nodes we are going to keep on treating them as different root nodes and then we will keep on flipping their values or their children's values and at the end we should have a completely inverted binary tree so let's see that in action so first of all this is the root node and this is the left and right subtree so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to swap the values so we were we will have a tree that looks like this okay so so far treating this as root tree we have actually swapped these left subtree and right subtree and we will get a tree that looks like this where you can see that this value 3 and 2 they are actually inverted but their subsequent children values they are not inverted and we will still have to repeat the same process so let's see that in action so now again uh, what we are going to do is we are going to treat this 3 to be root child and we are going to repeat the same process with the 6 and 7 so if we invert them we will get a tree that looks like this now we are going to treat the 7 to be the root node if we treat the 7 to be the root node actually it does not have any children which means we don't need to flip any more values now again we will treat the 6 to be the root node if we treat the 6 to be the root node again it does not have any more children so we can skip that now we will treat this 2 to be the root node so if we treat this 2 to be the root node it has children so we will have to swap their values and we will get a value that looks like this 
and we would have taken care of uh, both of them now again this 5 and 4 does not have any children which means we can't do anything about it and then in the end this is going to be the answer we need to return so we can simply return the root value and basically we would have inverted the entire tree uh, recursively so that is the approach we can use as an optimal solution there is also one more way to iteratively approach this problem but the thing is i believe that for tree kind of problems the the recursive approach is better than the iterative approach let me know in the comments if you want to see the iterative approach as well and i can make a separate video on that if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n where n is the number of nodes that are present inside any given tree because we will have to iterate over every single tree to invert them now if we see the space complexity well at any given moment because of the recursive function we might have to uh, store bunch of different node values and that would depend on the height of the tree so basically the space complexity is going to be big o of h where h is the given height of any binary tree. So because we are going to solve this problem recursively, first let's uh, create the terminating condition that if the given root is actually null, we can return. If the given root is not null, we are going to make the recursive call for right and left uh, val values. So for right tree, we are going to make the recursive call to the same function with the right child. Same thing we are going to do for the left subtree after that we are going to replace the values of left and right subtree uh, so now that should have taken care of all the cases and now we can simply return the root value and that should be it so let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our solution is actually pretty efficient it's actually 100% faster than all the other solution and that is because the runtime is actually 0 millisecond i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you hello friends we are not employed by a fan company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there today we are going to do binary tree maximum path sum lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where i want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like amazon doordash facebook microsoft google bytedance tiktok snapchat twitter apple uber and linkedin so that's why i am paying my utmost attention i hope you also enjoy the video so despite being a hard problem this is a very well liked problem on lead code uh, basically we are given the root of a binary tree and we need to return the maximum path sum for that particular non-empty path so we will have to understand couple of terminologies over here uh, we will have to understand that what a path sum is and before we understand that we will have to understand that what a path is lucky for us we are given definition of both of them so a path is a binary tree sequence of nodes where uh, each pair of adjacent nodes in that particular sequence has an edge connecting them and we are also told one a very important thing that any single node in that sequence can at most appear once and we are also given the note that it is not necessary that path has to go through the root of the node okay so over here i have drawn a couple of different trees and i'm going to show you some examples of what a valid path is and what an invalid path is so first of all this is a valid path and for that we'll have to understand that why this path is a valid path because all the three nodes that are connected in this particular path they are adjacent to each other they all have an edge connecting to them and they all appear at most once and nothing more than that now this is also a valid path and this is also a valid path this is also a valid path and this is also a valid path both paths are valid as well and the path that looks like this this is also a valid path and the path that looks like this this is also a valid path now let's see some examples of an invalid path suppose i start of my journey over here i go up i go down i go to the left uh, child and then again i try to go to the right child again this is an example of an invalid path because this node appears twice as well now we know many examples that what a valid path is now let's see that what the problem is actually asking us to solve after understanding the definition of a path we are going to understand the definition of a path sum basically it is the sum of all the nodes that are present inside this given path so that is actually quite simple to understand and the problem is actually asking us to find the maximum path sum that we can make out of given binary tree so now i have drawn three different trees to understand the maximum path sum for each one of them so first of all for this particular tree the maximum path sum is going to be this path 
and why because all the nodes are positive and if we take the sum of these three nodes it's actually going to be 5 plus 4 plus 9 which becomes 18 and this is what we need to return in the answer if we take the second example things are not as easy as the first one why because we are dealing with a negative value over here so in this case even if we try to do the same path that we had drawn over here this won't work because the sum of this is actually going to be which is not the most optimal path we can achieve the most optimal path in this case is going to be this one with and the sum is actually going to be 5 plus 4 equals to 9 and in this case we will have to return 9. So in this case the maximum path actually is going to be this one between these three nodes. Why? Though there is a positive value over here if we were to include this positive value the path we would make would looks like this and that would actually go through this root value which has the value of negative 11 which actually brings the total path down or total sum down so that is why it is not in our best interest to include this node and that is why the maximum path in this case we can achieve is amongst these three nodes where the sum is actually going to be 10 plus 8 plus 2 equals to 20 and that is what we need to return now before we come up with the optimal solution i'm going to show you a few different concepts with various examples so first of all we have an example of tree that looks like this where in this case all the nodes are positive which means things are a little bit easy for us and our aim is to find the maximum product sum we can achieve right so the idea is at any given portion we have the root information mm -hmm. now from this root information what we are going to do is we are going to see that what this left subtree has to offer and what this right subtree has to offer and then addition of all of them should give us our maximum product sum so in this case this left subtree does not have any more children it only has one node which means it can the maximum value it can contribute towards the maximum path sum is going to be 5 so we have the value 3 already from this root then we gain this 5 from the maximum path sum and then again we gain this 2 from this right subtree so the total maximum path sum we can achieve is going to be 10 which is the answer in this case and since all nodes were positive it is in our favor to include all the nodes so that is one way to do it right and this is a very simple exa example so we are able to understand it quickly now let's try to see that what would be the approach in a little bit more difficult uh, scenario so suppose we are given a tree like this in this case we actually have a negative value so if we apply the same logic over here this left subchild has minus 5 to offer this right subchild has plus 2 to offer and this root value is actually 3 so maximum path sum based on the previous logic would actually become zero if we just do sum of all the values but that is not we are going not what we are going to do we are also going to check at any given moment that whether the value that is being contributed if that is less than zero or not if that is less than zero immediately we are going to discard this value which means that we are not going to consider this minus five to be part of this maximum product sum and in this case what we are going to do is we are going to do this three plus two because both values are positive so in this case the answer we are going to get is 5 so we gain one more important thing that whenever we see minus values we are going to ignore that from our maximum production because they don't add any more value over here now one more thing we need to consider what if we uh, we have multiple nodes and then what should be our approach in that case okay suppose we are given an example like this in this case what should be our approach well uh, we, uh, we want to find the maximum path sum so again we are going to repeat the same process we are going to see that for this root node what is this left subtree has to offer it has to offer maximum five value so we are good up until this point for this right subtree actually we will have to calculate that what is the maximum value it can offer and how we can do it we are actually going to take this root value because that is going to be the part of this right uh, right subtree for sure so we already have value as eight over here now from this 8 we actually have two options to be included for our maximum path sum we can either do 8 2 or we can do 8 1 so in this case obvious choice is going to be 2 because 2 well this value 2 is actually greater than with this value 1 so in this case we are going to ignore this 1 and we are going to keep this 2 which means that we can do 8 plus 2 to be 10 so in this case we can determine that this actually has the value 10 to give towards maximum path sum now the question will come to your mind is that why in this case we only choose value 10 and why not we chose value 11 well what if in under what circumstances can this value become 11 it can become 11 if we include all these three values to be part of this maximum path sum but we already know that this goes through the root value 
which means that uh, if we were to include all these three values uh, to make the value 11 it won't work because then the path would look like this it would go from 5 to 3 okay so far we are good then again through 8 now from this 8 we cannot include both 1 and 2 because suppose we try to do it we include this one and then we try to go back to 2 we come up at this 8 again and we know that that cannot be part of a path sum so that is why we only have the option to choose either 1 or 2 so that is the important important detail over here that is why for when we were calculating the maximum contribution this right subtree can make we can, we only had two options either we could do 8, 8 plus 2 or we could do 8 plus 1 but not both of them so th just remember that that is why i showed you this example so in this case the maximum contribution we can get from this right subtree is going to be 10 so now let's calculate the maximum path sum in this case so the maximum path sum is going to be the root node is 3 plus this left subtree can contribute value 5 and plus this right subtree can contribute value 10 so the answer is going to be 18 and this is what we need to return in this case so so far we have understood we had gained very good understanding of many different cases now let's consider one more case where the things become a little bit more interesting and why it becomes interesting because so far we are under the impression that we have to take this root value as part of the answer but what if that is not the case what if we encounter some possibility where this root value does not need to be part of the main uh, maximum path sum that we take then how do we approach that so let me quickly show you an example for that as well okay this is the last complicated example now in this case we are again going to apply the same logic to find the maximum path sum but we are going to do some interesting things so first of all we have this root value to be minus 3 right now we are going to see that what is the leftmost contribution it can get it can get 3 as a, as the contribution in this case now again for this portion we are going to see that what is the rightmost contribution it can get the rightmost contribution it can get in this case is going to be this 8 plus 2 so 8 plus 2 is going to be 10 so far right now if we see over here actually this is not the most optimal way to approach this why because this path actually gives us the maximum path sum so let's see that how can we actually determine that well when we are traversing we are actually going to have a variable called path to keep track of what is the current maximum value we have found so far and whether do we need to include a new route and new route in this case is going to be the condition where we actually refrain away or move away from the original route we were using because if we were to use this root node there is no way for us to use all of these three nodes uh, so that's why we are what we are going to do is we are first of all going to see that if we use this current root what is the maximum value we are gaining so the maximum value we are gaining in this case is going to be 3 which is this one plus 10 which is the contribution we can get from this right subtree so 3 plus 10 and let me get rid of this maximum path sum for now so 3 plus 10 plus whatever the root value so root value in this case is minus 3 which is in this case the total value is going to be 10 but now when we are traversing or when we were calculating the maximum contribution we can gain from this uh, right subtree where the root node is actually 8 the value maximum we can gain from over here is actually going to be this value 8 plus it has the left its left subtree is contributing value 1 and its right subtree is contributing value 2 so which both are positive values and their total is actually 11 so this is 11 and this is 10 then why are we so keen to keeping this root to be part of the optimal solution we should not put it in the maximum path sum and we are oh, this is exactly what we are going to do then we are going to choose a new path and this new path the value is 11 so then we are going to have a maximum path sum variable where we are going to keep on updating the value and we are going to update the value to be 11 and now it does not have any further no more nodes to check for and then we are going to return this 11 to be the answer and at any given moment whenever we find that the new path we are getting that gives us better answer than whatever the previous answer we were getting then we would update the new path and we will update the value of the path variable so that is one tricky part that we have to understand in this question and now let's see that after understanding all the concepts now let's see that what would be the way to solve this problem uh, the idea is uh, let me clean this up a bit now i'm going to use the same example to quickly walk through this problem uh, so first of all we are at this root position what is the left contribution we can get which is 2 the right contribution we can get in this case it's going to be 10 uh, we actually calculated all of them 
uh, now the sum of these two is uh, these three is actually going to be uh, 10 only but when we were calculating that uh, we had this path variable where we actually calculated the value of this to be 11 and we updated this path variable and then we are going to have this maximum path value uh, where we are going to keep track of the maximum path we have found so far and in the end because it does not have any more children we are going to return the maximum path to be uh, 11 and this is what the answer we need to return so basically we are taking a bigger uh, problem and then we are uh, dividing it into a bunch of different parts that for this root we are actually see, trying to calculate this left subtree and right subtree then again for this root value we are again calculating this left subtree and right subtree which means we are solving this problem recursively and that is how we are going to approach it and also let me show you the time and space complexity so time complexity in this case is actually going to be big o of n why big of n because at any given moment we will have to iterate over all the nodes that are present inside this given tree and the space complexity is going to be big o of h where h is the height of the tree so first of all we will need a separate method called max gain to calculate that what is the maximum value we are gaining so for that we are going to create a new method it takes in a, a node as an argument we will also need a maximum sum value so we are going to initialize it as global variable we are going to assign it to the most negative value possible so okay now let's start implementing our max gain function so first of all we are going to have the terminating case that if the given node is equal to null we will return zero if that is not the case we will need the values of left gain and right gain for any any given tree node so we are again going to call the recursive function for that we are going to create a variable called price new path that we are actually going to calculate by using the node value plus whatever the sum of left gain and right gain is now that is done we are actually going to calculate the max sum we are going to compare it with whatever this new path we are calculating and once that is done basically all we will have to do is simply return uh, the node value with whatever the maximum value is amongst this left gain or right gain from this max path sum method we will have to uh, call this max gain function so let's do that after all the calculation we are simply going to return whatever the max sum we are able to achieve okay and now let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our solution is actually pretty efficient and faster than a lot of other solution and i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there hello friends we are not employed by a fang company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there today we are going to do binary tree level order traversal lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where i want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like linkedin amazon microsoft facebook bloomberg google apple and uber so that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem. And basically we are given the root of a binary tree. Now we need to return the level order traversal for this binary tree. And we need to return the nodes values. Now we are also told that we need to return them in left to right fashion and uh, level by level. Basically we are given a binary tree over here. Now for any binary tree basically we always have two things. We have a root node or a parent node and that parent node has some children nodes. So and furthermore this children node can have children of their own as well. So every time a new set of nodes are being added at the bottom essentially we can define a new level being created. So if we see this example over here essentially this is level 1, this is level 2 and this is level 3. And we need to return the nodes level wise from left to right so let's try to understand this with this example over here where we are given three levels so this is level one these two nodes they are located at level two and this two nodes they are located at level number three so in the answer first of all we are going to return this node three because this is the only node at this level there are no other nodes now at the second le second level we have two nodes 9 and 20 and we need to return them in the same sequence of 9 and 20 and in the third section we have two nodes 15 and 7 first we'll return 15 and then we'll return 7 and that is the answer we are going to return in this case uh, let's see that what would be different approaches to solve this problem so when it comes to tree traversals there are mainly two subcategories first one is a depth first search and second one is a breadth first search well in the depth first search we actually expand upon the depth of any given tree 
and then we keep on iterating over all the nodes while in the breadth for search we actually visit the root node first and then visit its children and then keep on repeating the same process so in this portion uh, for depth for search there are three further subcategories in order pre-order and post order which i'm going to show you first and then i'll explain you how breadth for search work and in this problem actually we are going to use breadth for search to solve this problem so during the in order traversal basically first we visit the left side of the tree then we visit the root node and then we visit the, the right node so first of all for this root node we will keep on expanding until the left node exists so left node exists over here and then left node again exists over here which means this is the first node we are going to visit so we start our visit the traversal at 4 now 4 does not have any more children which means we can't go downwards anymore which means now we go back to the root node so root node for this 4 is actually 2 and then we again expand on the right side for this 2 we still have right side 5 that we haven't visited so we will do that now again we have visited all these three nodes so now we are done with these now we again go back to the root node which is 1 so we visit 1 and then again we repeat the same process left root and right so again we go on the right side so this is the strategy for in order traversal now for the pre-order traversal basically we follow the principle of root left and right node and this is the way we visit the node so first of all we are going to visit the root node which is one in this case then again we are going to visit the left node which is two then again we are going to visit the left node which is four then again we are going to visit the right node which is five again we come back and now in this case we again go back to this root node which is three then again we go to the left and then again we go to the right so this is the strategy for using a pre-order traversal now for the post order traversal basically we follow the principle of left node right node and then root node so first of all we are going to visit up until left node exists so this is the leftmost node so we are going to visit that first so we start our traversal at this position number four then we visit the right node which is five and then we visit the root node which is two in this case now uh, after this we actually don't visit this node one because for this road node one there exists a right subtree that we haven't visited so we again go to the right side and again this also has a left node which is 6 so then we visit the node 6 in this case then we visit the node 7 and then for after visiting the 6 and 7 then we visit its root node which is 3 and in the end after visiting all the nodes we visit the main root node which is 1 and this is going to be the traversal strategy for the post order traversal so when it comes to breadth for search we actually expand upon its neighbors or its children for any given tree rather than going in depth in any one particular direction so for if we see for this particular tree the breadth for search traversal is going to look like this so first of all we are going to visit the root node which is one in this case then we are going to visit its children so its children are actually two and three so we are going to visit this node two and three now for this left child again it still has children of its own so we are going to visit them first so we are going to visit this node four and five and then for this node three it has children of its own as well which is six and seven now in this case we cannot further expand because this four five six and seven does not have any children of their own so we are done with the traversal basically we have iterated over all the nodes that were given but if you see these nodes and the fashion we have visited them it actually gives a very interesting uh, perspective for the problem we are trying to solve well first of all we are visiting the node that is located at this position number one then we visited its children which are actually located at this level two so first we visited the level one node then we visited all the nod nodes that are present at level two and then we visited all the nodes that were present at level 3 if we had any further nodes then we would have visited them that were uh, for the nodes that were located at this level number 4 so this breadth for search is actually a very good solution for the problem we are trying to solve where we are, we are trying to see that what would be the level order traversal for any given tree basically we are anyways iterating the nodes in particular levels so all we will have to do is just simply make tuples of the level levels that uh, we are visiting and the nodes we are visiting at so that is how we are going to optimally solve this problem now we are going to use the same tree that we have been using so far and we are going to see that what would be the answer so first of all we will have to create an array list where we are going to store the answer now at any given position whenever we start iterating over this tree and whenever we jump to a new level we are going to create a new node inside our array list uh, so first of all we are at this level 1 right so now for this level 1 we are going to create a new node over here which is this one and for this level because this node is located at level 1 we are actually going to create an entry over here now for this one we are actually going to iterate over its children we are going to call its children 
टू एंड थ्री नाउ बिकॉज दीज आर चिल्ड्रन ऑफ दिस नोड वन दे आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी लोकेटेड एट लेवल विच इज वॉट एवर द लेवल ऑफ दिस वन इज प्लस वन सो द लेवल ऑफ दिस वन इज एक्चुअली वन सो वन प्लस वन इज गोइंग टू बी टू सो दीज नोड्स दे आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू बी लोकेटेड एट लेवल टू नाउ द मोमेंट वी आइडेंटिफाइड अ न्यू लेवल वी आर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू क्रिएट अ न्यू नोड इन साइड अवर एरे लिस्ट सो ओवर हियर वी वुड हैव क्रिएटेड दिस न्यू नोड नाउ इन दिस न्यू नोड बिकॉज वी विजिटेड दीज वैल्यूज टू एंड थ्री वी आर गोइंग टू एक्चुअली एड द वैल्यू टू एंड थ्री ओवर हियर नाउ अगेन वी विल हैव टू फर्दर गो डाउन फॉर दिस लेवल टू एंड थ्री एंड रिमेंबर दैट इनिशियली we only had this one node and we visited its children now again we have a node and we are visiting its children and again we have a node and we are visiting its children and uh, suppose these had if the new nodes they, we would have visited their children as well so basically we are doing the same work for different set of inputs where initially this was a child but now this becomes a parent for these nodes so we are basically doing recursion nothing special in this so now For, from this level two, whenever we will call these left and right children, basically where what we would have done is we would have increased whatever the value of level was for this value two plus one. So this was located at level two, which means these nodes they are actually located at level three. So now again we created a new level. So because we created a new level, we are going to create a new entry inside our array list, and then. all the values located at this level we are actually going to store them in this portion of our array list so now we are going we are first of all we are going to visit node 4 so we are going to add node 4 over here then from this 2 we are going to visit its right children which is this node 5 so we are going to add 5 over here now we still have nodes that we haven't visited so now we have this node 3 so we are going to first of all visit its left children which is this node 6 and this is also located at level 3 because this 3 originally was located at level 2 so this is also at, because this is at level 3 we are adding it in the third portion or third place holder inside our array list and then in the end we are going to visit this node number 7 as well at the end now this does not have any further children so we are good up until this point and we can stop our traversal and return this new array list that we have created as the answer so this is the approach we are suggesting and if we see we did the breadth first search traversal and basically we did it recursively now we could have done it iteratively as well no, nothing special in there uh, so you can discuss with your interviewer what is the strategy you want to use and 9 out of 10 times your interviewer is going to ask you to do this problem recursively because it's lot, lot less code uh, if we see time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big of n where n is the number of nodes that are present inside this given node and if we see space complexity well uh, basically we will have to create recursive we will have to make recursive calls and that takes uh, some space and that space is actually dependent on height of the given tree so space complexity is actually going to be big of h where h is the height of the tree now first of all we are actually going to create a list of list where we are going to store the answer and we are going to declare it as a global variable because we are uh, going to create a new method for our recursive call so first of all let me create this global variable called answer now we are going to create a new public method which is going to be uh, acting as our recursive function and it does not return anything we are going to name it as order and as an argument it is going to take any tree node and the level we are currently at and now inside this method first of all what we are going to do is that whenever we are at any position or whenever we are creating a new node basically we are going to add a new entry to our answer after creating a new value for a new level now all we will have to do is whatever this tree node is based on its level value we will have to add that value to our answer now after doing that basically all we will have to do is for any single given node value first of all we are going to check that whether it's left child and right child if they exist or not if they exist basically we are going to call the same order method with this left child and right child and we are going to increase the value of the levels that is all we need to do for this order method so now from this main method first of all we are going to check for an edge case that if this given root is null if this is null we can simply return the answer and if this given root is not null basically we will have to call this order method with our root information and the current level that we are at and now at the end we simply have to return whatever the answer we get let's try to run this code it seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code 
and our code is actually pretty efficient compared to a lot of other solution and i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you So today we are going to do serialize and deserialize binary tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who already asked this question there are companies like Amazon, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Uber, Google, Facebook, DoorDash, TikTok, Apple, Snapchat, Splunk and Goldman Sachs. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. Hello friends. The reason I have not been uploading in recent days is because I just had twin baby girls and uh, so yeah that's the update and now let's move on to the video so lead code thinks that this is actually a hard problem but in my opinion this is not a hard problem it's actually a very creative problem uh, basically we need to serialize and deserialize the given binary tree now first we'll have to understand that what does serialize and deserialize means well uh, serialization is the process of converting the given data structure which is tree in this case and we need to convert that into a sequence of bits so that it can be stored in some memory or file buffer and then we can transmit it across any network. Now in this problem basically we need to design an algorithm where we are actually serializing and deserializing a binary tree. So serializing means that first of all we are finding a way to convert the given binary tree in some sort of uh, bits and in this case we are told that we need to convert it in strings. So we are familiar with that and then deserialize means that we need we are given this string and we need to write an algorithm to convert this string back to a binary tree. So we'll have to do both the things and if you see this problem this is actually very similar problem that we did earlier with strings uh, this is the solution of that problem so go and check it out first uh, we are also given a clarification that we can be as creative as we can with the serialization and uh, deserialization process so we can have different way of serializing the tree and different way of deserializing the tree as long as we maintain the tree data structure uh, so let's see that what is the approach i am suggesting and you can also come up with your own own, own creative approach Well, basically in this problem, we are only given the root of a tree and then somehow we will have to go over the entire tree and then uh, traverse it, convert this given root and all of the entire tree into a string. And after we have converted it to string, we will have to find a way that suppose if we are given the string as the input, how can we convert from the string this binary tree as well? So we are doing both the processes. So the important thing in this case is that we will have to traverse over the given binary tree. There are mainly two strategies to traverse over the given binary tree DFS and BFS and I have explained this very carefully in the previous video you can check it out over here. So basically in this video what I am suggesting is that we actually go with pre-order approach for th using DFS to serialize and deserialize this given binary tree and I would be showing you that what is the process we are following. So first of all we are going to serialize this given tree which means we are going to take this binary tree and we are going to convert it to a string. Now as mentioned earlier we are going to use the pre-order traversal for that. So if you are not familiar with the pre-order traversal basically we visit the root node first then we visit the left child of this root node and then we visit the right child of this root node and that is how we are going to end up creating the string from this given binary tree. So let's see that in action. So first of all, uh, let's create a variable called s or string where we are going to store the string value. So first of all, we are going to visit the root node. The root node in this case is 1. So we are going to add an entry called 1 over here. Now we need to visit the left child of this root and then we need to visit the right child of this root. Now remember, this is actually a DFS policy. So in the DFS, we go in the depth first. So first of all, we are going to visit the left child. So left child in this case is 2. So we are going to add an entry that 2 is the left child over here. And then again for this 2 because we still have left child left so we are going to visit that so for this 2 the left child in this case is actually 4 now for this 4 we don't have any more left child and we don't have any more right child which means that first we try to visit the left child for this 4 there is no left child so we enter a value called null over here and then for this 4 again there is no right child so again we add value null over here saying that for this 4 the two left child and right child is actually a null value now after that we still have nodes left that we haven't visited for so now for this node 2 we have this node 5 and it's right so again we are going to enter the value 5 over here after entering the value 5 we are again going to check the uh, left child and right child for this 5 so left child in this case is null and again right child is also null so we will add two more entries null null again and now we go back so now we have visited all of these nodes 
but the thing is we haven't visited the right portion of this original root node so again we will have to iterate over the right subtree so right subtree in this case is going to be 3 so we add 3 over here now for this 3 again we don't have any more children nodes so again we add 2 null values so this is the answer in this case that we have to return for this given tree that this is the string value that represents this given binary tree now let's see that what would be the deserialization process so now we are going to work upon the deserialization so basically we are going to convert string into binary tree so the idea is this is the string we generated from the serialization process now again we are because we are using pre-order traversal we are actually going to uh, apply the same logic so we are going to treat the first node to be the root node then the next node would be the left subchild of this root node and the next node is going to be the right subchild of this root node and we are going to keep on iterating this process in in reverse order so the idea is that first of all okay we identify this node so this node is actually our root node okay so root node is actually one in this case now again this two is actually the left child of this root node so because this left child exists the next the, the next node is again going to be the left child of this node 2 so again we are going to create a node 4 that is left child of this node now for this 4 the next two nodes are actually null null so because we encounter two null values which means this 4 does not have any more children so we can just ignore that okay now we still have a node 5 which means that this 5 is actually the right child of this 2 because we have already visited the left subtree of this 2 so now because we are done with the left subtree now we are visiting the right subtree so we are going to create one more entry 5 over here as the right subtree and again we have two more null values which means that this right subtree is done now we don't have any more values okay now we still have values which means that this actually refers to a root node where we haven't visited the left and right subtree because remember that this is the left subtree we have visited for this 2 and this is the right subtree we have visited for this 2 but we haven't visited the right subtree for this original one so now we are going to do that so now we are going to add one more entry 3 over here which is the right subtree of this original given one and this 3 actually has null null values which means 3 does not have any more children so we won't be adding any more entries over here and we can just ignore that now we have reached the end of the string so because we have reached the end of the string we have created the binary tree that we are supposed to create and we have completed the deserialization process and we have converted the string into the binary tree so this is the approach we are going to take if we see the time and space complexity in this case for the serialization process the time complexity is actually going to be a uh, big o of n because we have to iterate over n can characters that are present and the space complexity is also going to be big o of n because we will have to create a string where we are storing all the n values now for the deserialization process again the time and space complexity remains the same now we will have to create two methods uh, for serialize and deserialization so first of all we are going to work upon serialize process so i am actually going to create a new public method uh, that returns a string uh, where uh, recursively we can apply the pre order traversal and as an input it is going to take the root value and we, uh, we are also going to pass the string value now inside this recursive function first of all we are going to find the terminating case so if the given root is equal to null then simply add the value to the string as null if that is not the case which means that root still has some value and it could have left subtree and right subtree so now we are going to call the recursive function so first of all we are going to add the value to our string now we are going to call the left subtree and right subtree so we are again going to call this recursive serialize method Again, we are going to repeat the same process for the right subtree. Once this ends, we are simply going to return the string. Now, from our main serialize method, all we have to do is just call this uh, recursive serialize method and return whatever the answer we get. We are going to pass in root as an entry and we are going to pass in an empty string. So now we are done with our serialize method. Now let's work upon deserializing method. Now, again, for the deserializing process, uh, first of all, we will have to create a recursive method to iterate over this given string data and then we are going to convert all the string values into binary tree so we are passing a list of strings in this case for this recursive deserialize method and now first of all we are going to work upon the terminating case if the given node is null we can simply re remove the value and then we can return null okay if that is not the case first of all we are going to note the whatever the value of this current string is we are going to treat it as a root node and then we are going to call the left subtree and right subtree so we are going to create a new tree node called root 
so whatever the current value of the string is we are going to treat it as a root node then after adding the root node we are actually going to remove that value okay now for the left value we are again going to call this uh recursive deserialize method and that should be it after this ends uh, basically we should have a root variable so we can simply return root now from this main method first of all we will have to create a, an array of string where we are actually splitting the string based on the comma that we initially created after doing this we are actually going to convert the string array into a list of strings now we will simply return whatever the answer we get by calling this recursive method that should be it now let's try to run this code Okay, seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. So I'll be trying to see other faster approaches and see I can uh, show make a future video on that. But so far you can find this code in the comments. So you can check it out from there. Thank you. Hello friends, we are Standard Employed by a Fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do subtree of an another tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, Bloomberg and Tesla. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention, I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code easy problem and basically we are given the roots of two different binary trees called root and subroot. Now we need to check that whether there exists a subtree of this original root tree where the structure is completely same as whatever the subroot binary tree that we are given. If that is the case we will return true. If that is not the case we will return false. So let's try to understand this with an example. Basically, we are given two different binary trees called root and subroot. Now over here, uh, we can see that the structure of the subroot, uh, which contains the root value as four, a uh, left child as one and right child, uh, right child as two, where one and two does not have any more children of their own. The same structure is also present in this example as well. Uh, and because it is a subtree of this original root to binary tree, we can return true in this case. So now let's take one more example to make things a little bit more clear. So in this second example, we are also given two different binary trees. Now if we see the structure of the subroot, uh, we have a node uh, 4. It has a left child and right child of 1 and 2 respectively and they don't have any more children of their own. Now if we see this original root, we can also see a similar structure and I'm focusing on the word of similar, not exact same. Because in this case, we also have 4, 1 and 2 present. But the thing is, notice that this 2 actually has another node or another left child 0 that is present over here, which is not the case in this scenario. So because this is not the case, we cannot say that these two are same and these two are actually not same. So in this case, we will return false. And basically we are trying to see that whether one tree is a subtree of another tree or not. So that's why uh, the name of the problem is subtree of another tree. It is self-explanatory. And now let's see what are the different approaches to solve this problem. So this is the root and subroot we are given. Now over here, we are trying to see that what would be the optimal solution for this problem. And basically we can clearly see that uh, the answer in this case is going to be true because this 9, 1 and 2 is also present as a subtree in this original root tree. So that's why we, we can return true in this case. The thing is, let's see that what is going to be the strategy. Well, the idea is we are actually going to iterate over this given root tree in BFS fashion. Now, if you don't know what BFS is, BFS is basically breadth first search and you can see more details about that in this video I have done previously. Now, uh, let's focus on the problem at hand. So the idea is that at every single time we are going to iterate over this root node and we are going to iterate in BFS fashion, which means we are also going to iterate its neighbors for every single node. Now, at every single time, we are going to compare it with this subroot tree. And the moment we find a match, we are going to iterate over both the trees in BFS fashion. So let me quickly show you what I mean by that. So first of all, uh, in this root tree, we are I'm going to iterate over this root number five. Now, this root number five is not same as this root number nine. So which means I can't do anything over here. I have already iterated this value. Now I'm going to iterate its children. So first of all, I'm going to iterate over this root value eight. So this 8 is again not same as this 9. So we can ignore this case. Now we are at this position number 9. So this 9 is actually same as this 9. So because these two values are same, now I'm going to do BFS traversal for both of the subroot and root trees. 
now from this 9 if i see the bfs traversal basically i'm going to go to the left child so left child in this case is one so again i'm going to see the same thing in, even in this case the left child is also one so yeah i'm good up until this point now i'm going to go to the right child this is two and the, the right child in this case is also two so yeah again i'm good until this point now i'm not going to stop my traversal i'm going to keep on iterating till i find all the null values so in this case this one does not have any children uh, left or right so in this case i'll encounter a null value so i'll try to see the same thing over here so over here this does not contain any uh, sub child of its own as well so this is also null so i'm good up until this point now if i try to see this portion so this also this is also null and this is also null so because all the values are same and i found no other children that i can iterate over in this case i can simply return true now uh, there are two ways to do this problem uh, i can do it iteratively or i can do it recursively and uh, if you know my videos i like the recursive method better so i'm going to show you the recursive solution now let's see one more case where uh, the answer is going to be the false so suppose for the same example uh, we do everything right but over here this two actually has a sub child called uh, let's just say seven over here now uh, because this two has a sub child called seven now the moment i am done iterating these values and i don't find anything i'm good up, up until this point but now at this portion at this node 2 i'll find a value 7 over here but when i try to find the same value over here i won't be able to find and because i won't be able to find i'll return false now the time complexity is actually going to be big o of m plus n why m plus n because we will have to iterate over all the nodes that are present inside this given tree root and subroot and m is the number of length of all the nodes that are present over here and n is the number of uh, length of all the nodes that are present in this subroot and if we see space complexity well basically because we are doing it recursively uh, we might have to uh, iterate over all the values and the space complexity in the worst case could be m plus n as well and uh, now let's move on to the coding So before we start working on each subtree method, first of all, we are actually going to have to uh, create a new method where if we pass in the value of any root node and subroot node, it can determine that whether both values are same or not. So first, let's do that. So we created an is same method which takes in the value of two tree nodes. Now, first of all, we are going to check that if both values are null, which would be the terminating case for our recursive call. So if both values are null, we can simply return true. Now, if that is not the case, we will also have to check the scenario where one value is null and other value is not null. If that is the case, we will have to return false. Now, there is also one more thing we will have to check that and that is the value of this S and T. So, if the value of S and T, if they are not the same, we can return false immediately. And if everything is not uh, returned by this point, which means that the value of S and T is same. So, now we will have to check the left subtree of S and left subtree of uh, T. And same thing we'll have to do for the right subtree of S and right subtree of T. So let's do that. Now from our main method is subtree method. First of all, we are going to check that if the given root is null, if that is the case, we can return false immediately. So if that is not the case, we will have to call our is same method for this root node and subroot node. So let's do that. And if we get the answer to be true, we can return true immediately. Okay, so if this does not return true which means this current root and subroot they are not the same if they are not the same we will have to iterate over this node root for its left child and right child to see if they are same with the subroot or not so let's do that so now for that we will have to call this is subtree method again and we are going to run bfs on this tree node root let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit this code Mm, our submission failed let's try to diagnose oh oh in this is same method we will have to check that whether the answer of both of them if that is true or not so we'll have to use end condition let's try to run the code again okay seems like this is working let's submit this code again okay and now our code runs perfectly fine it's faster than a lot of other solutions and i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you
Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop late coding till we get there. Today we are going to do construct a binary tree from pre-order and in-order traversal lead code problem. And if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Bloomberg, Apple, Uber, ByteDance, Google, Facebook and LinkedIn. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. Now this is a very hated lead code problem and let me show you why. This is from the solution tab of the lead code problem where people have expressed their views very abruptly. Some people are saying why God, why? Some people are saying that it's time to leave for Himalaya. Some people are saying that if you get this question, they do not want to hire you and things like that. There are many other comments. The thing is, we do not want to focus on the negativity. Let's try to see that what is the approach to solve this problem. And then we are going to see that how can we be able to solve this problem if we encounter this in any interview. Because our aim is to get into Feng, not just dream about it. Now this is a lead code medium problem but in my opinion this should have been a lead code hard problem. Now let's try to understand the problem. Basically we are given two integer arrays called pre-order and in-order and basically they are the pre-order traversal of a binary tree and in-order traversal of the binary tree. Now based on these two arrays that we are given we need to construct and return the original binary tree. So let's try to understand this with an example. So over here we are given as an input we are given two different arrays pre-order array and in-order array. Now somehow if we iterate over this pre-order and in-order array there is only one combination of binary tree we can make and which is this one. So that is the example that is given over here. Now let's see that what is going to be the different approach to solve this problem. But before we do that the important thing in this problem is to, is to understand that what is a pre-order traversal, what is the in-order traversal and how can we use their properties to our advantage. So first of all I am going to show you pre-order and in-order traversal how it works. So first of all we are going to learn about pre-order traversal and basically pre-order is a DFS kind of traversal which is depth first search. If you want to know more about different kinds of traversal you can check out my video over here. Now let's focus on the pre-order traversal for now. So basically in pre-order traversal first of all we visit the root node then we visit its left subtree and then we visit its right subtree and we keep on doing that until the nodes exist. So let's see that for this given example what is going to be the path that we are going to follow. So first of all we are going to visit the root node. So in this case the first node we are visiting is going to be node number 5. Then we are going to visit its left child. So left child in this case is 3. So again we are going to visit node number 3. And then again we are going to visit its left child because remember it's root, left subtree and right subtree. So left subtree still exists over here. So we are going to visit node number 1. Now left subtree does not, no, nothing more exists in the left subtree. So now we will start visiting the right subtree. So we, we now we will visit the node number 7. Now after visiting the node number 7, now there is nothing exists over here. So again we are going to go back to the root because we still have to visit its right subtree. So we, when we start visiting the right subtree, again we are going to follow the formula for root, left and right. So root node in this case is going to be 8. So now we are going to visit node number 8. After that we are going to visit node number 6 and then we are going to visit node number 9 which is the right subtree. And this is going to be the traversal path that we are going to take. Now let's see that what would be the in order traversal in the same manner. So again as mentioned the in order is also a DFS kind of traversal but in this case the methodology we follow is that first of all, first of all we visit the left node then we visit the root node and then we visit the right node. So for this given example what we are going to do is first of all we are going to go to the left node all the way possible. So left node in this case is 1. So first node we are going to visit is going to be node number 1. Now for uh, now we can't go left anywhere anywhere so now we are going to visit its root node so root node is in this case is going to be 3 and then we are going to visit its right node so right node in this case is going to be 7 after doing that after visiting all three nodes now we don't have any more nodes to travel on the left subtree so now we are going to visit the root node as mentioned over here because we have already taken care of this left part so now we are going to visit node number 5 now again we still have values that we need to visit on the right subtree so again we are going to take on the same initiative so now the first thing we are going to visit is going to be the leftmost element for this right subtree so leftmost element in this case is 6 so we are going to visit the node number 6 over here after that we are going to visit the root node which is 8 and then in the end we are going to visit the node 9 over here which is this one. So this is how in order traversal works. So after understanding both the values and both the different traversal mechanism let's see that what would be the optimal solution and how we are going to approach that. Okay suppose this is the binary tree that we are given that we need to iterate over and uh, we are given the pre-order and in-order traversal for both of them. So in that, this case the pre-order traversal for this tree is going to be 
and the in order traversal in this case is going to be now once we have both the values let's see that what is the approach we are going to take so if you closely observe both of these values for pre-order and in order traversal they both have something to offer the thing they have to offer is that this pre-order allows us to determine that what the root of any section of the tree is and this in order allows us to determine that what is the left subtree and what is the right subtree of any given tree how let me quickly show it to you so if we see this pre-order traversal the first value in this case is actually the root of the binary tree which is 5 over here which you can clearly see that the 5 is the root of the binary tree so well that is interesting information but the thing is this alone is not helpful if we see with this in order traversal for this 5 if we see the left side of this 5 there is only one entry over here which is 3 and if we see in this tree actually this 3 is the left subtree of this entire tree where the root is 5 now if we see on the right side the values are 6 8 and 9 which is these three items and this is actually the right subtree of this original given tree where the root value is 5 so now we actually have something meaningful that we can use if we keep on repeating the same process now for this pre-order traversal again we see okay so the next value is 3 so 3 is already the left subtree now if we again break it from this in order traversal for this in order traversal we only have three value over here we have nothing on the side we have nothing on the right side because the right side value is actually five which we have already identified that that is the root of this uh, original value three which means we can determine over here that for this three it does not have any values on the left subtract and right subtract because the very next value of this three is actually five which was already the root of this value uh, three so now again we have some meaningful information so so far let's backtrack the information we have found so far that let me create an answer value over here where we have already found that the, okay the first value is 5 uh, the leftmost value or the first left value or left subchild of this value number 5 is actually 3 and for this 3 it does not have any more children so now we can add the values null null over here okay now we are done iterating up until this point but we still have some more nodes that we need to iterate over so based on this pre-order traversal now the next node we have is 8 so now we know that the current root we are iterating over is actually 8 okay so we have this value 8 now from this uh, in order traversal we actually have these three values where this 8 is actually in the middle because remember this in order traversal allows us to determine that what is the left subtree and right subtree of any given root so in this case if the root is 8 then the left subtree is going to be the value 6 and the right subtree is going to be the value number 9 so we are going to use it to our advantage now uh, for this value number 6 again we are going to try to see that what is on the left of 6 and right of uh, 6 but in this case since we don't have any more information for this value number 6 the va left value is 5 which was the original root which we have already iterated over and this next value is 8 which was the origin the root of immediate root of this value number 6 which have, we have already iterated over so now we can determine that for this 6 we don't have any other value so which means that we have two null values so again now let's and same thing we can determine for this 9 as well that for this 9 the leftmost value is actually 8 and the in the right there is nothing over here which means this 9 also does not have any more children so now let's again backtrack based on the information we have found so far so now on the right side the value we got was 8 that was the root we iterated over and we found that information based on the pre-order traversal after finding this 8 now we started iterating over the left and right children of this 8 so left children was 6 so we iterated the value 6 now the 6 did not had any more children so we had the values null null over here and now then we had the value number 9 and 9 also did not have any more children so now again we had the two more null values over here and this is the actual binary tree that we were able to create based on this original given pre-order traversal and in-order traversal and that is the solution that your interviewer is expecting and that is what is needed for this problem as well now there are actually two ways to do this problem there, are, there is an iterative way and there is a recursive way if you know me i love the recursive solution so i'm going to opt for the recursive solution basically what we are going to do is initially we are going to find the root value and then we are going to find the left subtree and right subtree now again we are going to pick one value so we are going to pick the left subtree so now even for the left subtree we will have a root value and its left child and right child and again we are going to keep on repeating the same process and we will be continuing to building our answer and same thing we are going to repeat for our right subtree as well so basically we are taking a bigger problem and then dividing 
it into a bunch of different smaller problems i know this looks really messy but you get the idea of what i'm trying to convey over here and let's see the time and space complexity in this problem so time complexity is actually going to be big o of n where n is the number of nodes that are present inside any given tree because we will have to iterate over both in order and pre-order traversal and originally it's going to be 2n traversal the thing is generically we can write it to big o of n if we see space complexity well space complexity is also going to be big o of n uh, because uh, recursively we might have to iterate over all the nodes and it uh, worst case scenario it could take big o of n space this is a wonderful time and space complexity given that how complex this problem was and based on the pre-order and in-order traversal we were actually able to build the solution for the binary tree now let's see the coding so before we start coding we will actually have to define that how we are going to use this pre-order and in-order array well, we are going to use this pre-order array to determine that what is the root value for any subsequent positions. And once we have the root value, we are actually going to use this in-order array to determine that what is the left subtree and right subtree for any given root. And once we have both the information, we are actually able to build our tree. Now, the thing is, if you clearly understand that for this in-order array, we will have to look up at information much in much broader fashion than compared to this pre-order array. Uh, so what we can do is, in order to iterate over this in order array uh, rather than iterating it just by considering this to be an array we are actually going to create a hash map where we are going which is going to allow us to iterate over this in order array pretty fast and uh, so let me define two global variables over here first of all once you have these two information now from our main method first of all we will have to iterate over this in order array and then we will have to populate this in order index map that, that we just created so let me quickly run a for loop uh, now we have our hash map ready to go now we will have to create a separate method where we are going to call the recursion so first of all let me create a new public method so now i have created a new method called array to tree uh, that returns a tree node and as an input i am taking the pre order array on uh, the left portion and right portion uh, and now we are going to create this uh, recursive method now before i do that i will also have to initialize the values for this pre-order index and also for this in order index map so that i'm going to do it okay now back to our uh, recursive method so for recursion first of all we will have to create a term terminating case and the terminating case in this case is going to be that if the value of left is greater than the value of right if that is the case we break out immediately and we will return null if that is not the case First of all, we will have to define our root value and root value we are going to define from our pre-order array. So, uh, our root value is actually going to be the whatever this pre-order index value that we have. Uh, and then we are also going to uh, increment the value of this pre-order index as well. So, uh, this is the root value. And after that, we are going to increment the value of pre-order index now since we have our root value we are actually going to create a new tree node uh, called root and for this root node we are going to assign the value that we received over here originally the value of this pre-order index is zero which means that the first value we are getting from this pre-order is the main root of the tree uh, once we get that value we will have to create the left subtree and right subtree so we will have to call this uh, array to tree method again and we are going to populate the value for left and right child so for the left child we are again going to call this array to tree method uh, inside the input first of all we'll, we are going to provide this pre-order array as we found as it is now for the left subtree we are going to keep the value uh, same for the left value but for the right portion the value is actually going to be different and that is going to be different based on whatever this root value we had so in this case for the first value for this pre-order array the root value is actually 3 so now for the left uh, part we already have the value but for the right part we are going to have to provide all the values that are present after this root node so we are going to do that so for that uh, now our uh, in order index map is very helpful now we have both the information ready to us now we are uh, now we are going to call the right subtree in the same manner but in this portion we are going to treat whatever the right variable we had already uh, but now we are going to change the left variable so left for the left variable we are actually going to use uh, whatever the value we had for the root value and we are going to do it plus one and uh, uh, as the right limit we are going to keep whatever the right limit we originally had and after this recursion ends and after this function ends we simply need to return the root variable 
okay so now our recursive method is ready to go now all we will have to do is from our main method we will have to call this uh recursive method that we just created that should be it so we are written, we are calling this pre-order method but we are providing the pre-order array and as the left uh, position we are providing the value zero as the rightmost position we are providing the value of whatever the pre-order length is minus one and uh, that should do the trick now let's try to run this code it seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code is pretty efficient compared to a lot of other solutions i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you hello friends we are still not employed by a fang company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there today we are going to do validate binary search tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where i want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like amazon microsoft bloomberg facebook uber google apple bytedance lyft linkedin and netflix so that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code medium problem and one of the most liked tree problems on lead code. Uh, basically, we are given the root of a binary tree and we need to determine that whether that given tree is a valid binary search tree or not. We are also given the definition that what a valid binary search tree is. Basically, uh, for any given tree, if this root value or the node value, uh, so if this is the value of the node, basically every single value that is present on the left of the node should be less than whatever this node value is and every single value that is on the right side of the node should be greater than whatever this node value is so if that is the case and that is true for the entire given tree we can define it as a valid binary search tree so let's take a couple of examples that are shown over here so in the first example well basically the node value we have is two so the in, in the left subtree we only have one value that is one which is less than this two and on the right subtree we only have one value again which is three which is greater than uh, this node value two so in this case we can consider this to be a valid binary search tree and in this case we will return true but if we take a look at the second example so in the second example we are given this root value as 5 uh, so this value node value is 5 that is okay uh, if we see on the left subtree we only have one child and that is the value is 1 so this is again less than whatever the value we have for the node value now if we see on the right subtree the value of this is actually 4 so 4 is again less than 5 so because this 4 is less than 5 and remember that we have the definition of valid binary search tree that everything on the right subtree should be greater than whatever the nodes value is so in this case this value is actually not greater than the value of this root node so in this case this is not an valid tree so in this case we will return false and uh, this is what we have to define basically now based on the definition we can define that what a valid binary search tree is that for any particular given node if it's left entire left subtree if that is less than the, that node and if it's entire right subtree if that is greater than that node we can define that to be a valid binary search tree well if that is the case uh, the first intuition that comes to our mind is that for any given node value what we can do is we can check its left uh, child and right child if the uh, left child is less than it and right child is uh, greater than it if, if that is the case we will keep on repeating the same process for all the subsequent left child and right child with its uh, root node and in in the end uh, if we reach to the end of this tree we can return true immediately saying that this is a valid binary search tree well uh, let's try to apply that same logic for this particular example basically we are given this node 5 so this 3 is actually less than 5 and 8 is actually greater than 5 so in this case this portion is actually valid now again for this 3 this 1 is less than it and 4 is greater than it again this portion is also valid and uh, same is true for this 8 6 and 9 as well so in this case we can define this to be a valid binary search tree and we can return true in this case saying that this is a valid binary search tree but the thing is this solution is not the most optimal way to solve this problem and let me quickly show you why because based on the same logic for this 5 uh, this 3 and 8 again okay this is less then this is greater than so so far this is valid again for this three this is one and four so this is less than greater than again this is valid but now for this eight this is also two and nine so this is less than greater than again this is valid so all three portions are valid uh, by definition we would treat this to be a valid binary search tree and that would actually be a false positive why because uh, remember that by the definition for this uh, node everything that is on the right side of this tree should actually be greater than this node 5 but in this case this 2 is actually less than this 5 and because of that particular case we will need to return false in this case i think is based on our previous method we would have returned true so let's see that what would be the actual optimal solution to solve this problem 
So the idea for the optimal solution in this case is that we are actually going to do in order traversal on the given binary tree to determine that whether it's a valid binary search tree or not. Uh, well, if you want to learn more about different types of tree traversals, you can check out the video over here. Now let's get back to the question at the end. So basically what the idea I'm suggesting is that if we do in order traversal in any given tree, basically the idea for in order traversal is that first of all, we visit the left subtree, then we visit the node and then we visit the right subtree. Also this in order traversal traversal is a depth first search kind of a traversal where we are actually going in the depth first and then we are visiting the different nodes so in this case the traversal that we are going to do is that first of all we are going to do the go for the left subtree so for this node left node exists again for this node left node exists so first of all we are going to visit this left child then uh, this child does not have any more children of its own so now we are going to visit its node so we are going to visit this node 3 and then again we are going to visit its right child which is 4 in this case after doing that we are going to visit the node and then we will keep on repeating the same process so let's see that what is the path we are going to take for this in order traversal well for this problem basically the path we are going to take is that first of all as mentioned for we are going to visit this node number 1 so first node is going to be 1 then going, we are going to visit node number 3 and then we are going to visit node number 4 in the fashion of left node node and then right sub, sub node then we, again we are going to visit the node so we are going to visit node number 5 now we are start we are start going to keep on iterating on the right subtree so even on the right subtree again we are going to follow this method of left node and right so for this left subtree now this becomes the root node or the node and this also has a left subtree existing so first of all we are going to visit this node number 6 then we are going to visit node number 8 and in the end we are going to visit this node number 9 so this is the in order traversal for this given binary uh, tree now the thing is if you see this uh, traversal basically everything is going in uh, increasing order and this whole thing is actually sorted and this is the property of this in order traversal that we are going to make use of and we are going to solve it optimally the idea is uh, for any given tree that we are presented with we are going to do a in, in order traversal and during the in order traversal basically the only thing we have to keep track of that any given node that we are iterating whether that node is actually uh, greater than its previous node or not if it is not greater than, greater than its previous node immediately we can return false so in this case because this was a valid binary search tree we were able to get uh, an in order traversal that is completely in increasing order and all the previous nodes they are actually less in value compared to its next subsequent node and this property is maintained throughout the entire journey now uh, let's see one example where this is not the case so in this example we can clearly see that this node 2 is at the correct place and this is not a valid binary search tree so let's see the in order traversal over here so in this case the path is going to be the next node we are going to visit is actually 2 and if we compare this node 2 to its previous value the previous value is actually 5 5 is actually greater than this 2 which should not be the case and immediately at this point only we can conclude that this is an invalid binary search tree we will return false immediately in this case and that is the answer we are going to use now actually there are two ways to do in order traversal for any given binary search tree there is an iterative way and there is a recursive way if you know me i like the recursion better so i'm going to show you the recursive way in the coding but it can be also done iteratively as well and the tricky part in this problem is to identify that we need to solve this problem using in order traversal if we see time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n where n is the number of nodes that are present for the space complexity uh, we are using recursion and we might have to uh, store uh, n characters in the worst case scenario First of all, we are actually going to define a global variable called previous to store the value of the previous element. Now let me create a new in order method that would be our recursive method. So now I have created a new in order method that returns a boolean answer and we are taking just a root value as the input. Now first of all, we are going to create the terminating case that if the given root is equal to null, we are going to return true. If that is not the case, first of all, for the in order traversal, we will have to call the leftmost function or leftmost value. So we are going to do that. So uh, first of all, we are going to see that if the answer for the root dot left, if that is uh, false, we will return false. If that is not the case, we will move on towards our next condition. Okay, so if we did not return false from our left side subtree traversal, 
then we are going to check our condition so the condition we are going to check is that whether the current root value if that is less than or equal to the previous value if that is the case which means that uh, we have actually found an invalid binary search, search tree so we can return false immediately so if we don't return false by this point which means the previous value was actually less than whatever the current root value we had which is a good sign so now what we are going to do is we are going to update the value of our previous uh, variable so that is going to be the current root value and then uh, after that we are going to call the right side subtree as well so uh, we can simply return the in order uh, for the right subtree now from our main method all we will have to do is we will set up we will have to set up the value of the previous character uh, so initial value is going to be the null and then we are going to call uh, this uh, in order method okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our submission runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions and that is because the code runs in zero milliseconds uh, i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you hello friends we are standard employed by a fang company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there Today we are going to do kth smallest element in binary search tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like Uber, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, LinkedIn, Apple, Google and Bloomberg so that's why I am paying my utmost attention I hope you also enjoy the video so this is a lead code medium problem and basically we are given the root of a binary search tree and we are also given an integer called k now we need to return kth smallest value from all the given values uh, inside any given binary tree so let's try to understand this with couple of examples that are presented over here so this is a binary search tree we are given and if you notice the important property of binary search tree where uh, for whatever the root node everything on the left subtree is less than that root node and everything on the right subtree is greater than that root, root node that is present for this BST so that is the definition of binary search tree I'm just making it clear and now for this example this is the binary search tree we are given and we are also given the value of k to b1 which means we need to return first smallest value so in this case the first smallest value or the smallest value is going to be this value 1 and this is what we need to return as the output let's take one more example so in this case again we are given a binary search tree and we are also given the value of k is equal to 3 which means we need to return third smallest value so if we see in this case this 1 is actually the first smallest value uh, same with this 2 is the second smallest value and same with this 3 is actually the third smallest value so in this case we will have to return this 3 as the answer so I hope that you have understood the problem by now now let's see that what is going to be the optimal approach to solve this problem okay suppose this is the binary search tree that we are given and we are trying to find the kth smallest value at any given position so the idea i am suggesting is that for this particular binary search tree if we make the sorted array of all the values and we sort them in increasing order then whatever this array we have created that is already sorted uh, based on this it becomes pretty easy for us to find the kth value uh, how all we have to do is just look up in this array and we, we will be able to find the value let me quickly show you what i mean so for this particular binary search tree if we see the sorted path where the first value is 1 then we have the value 3 then we have the value 4 and then we have 5 8 and 9 and this is the sorted path that we have we have been able to generate now once we have this value it becomes pretty easy for us to find any kth position uh, how uh, suppose we are given k is equal to 2 we can immediately return second smallest value which is the second value in this case which is the value number 3 if we are given k is equal to 5 then we simply need to return this value number 8 uh, if we are given k is equal to 3 we can simply return this value number 4 so now you you get the idea that once we have this sorted path it becomes pretty easy for us to find any kth position so all we will have to work on is that from this given binary search tree how can we actually create this sorted path and if you know or if you have followed my previous video you know the answer the answer is actually in order traversal so let me quickly show you the optimal solution using in order traversal for this problem
okay so in order traversal actually a depth first search kind of a traversal which means that first of all on the left side of the subtree we go to the leftmost position then we visit its node or its root value and then we visit its right subtree and we keep on repeating the same process so let's see that what is going to be the path in this case so path in this case is first of all we are going to visit the leftmost element which is one so we'll visit node number one then we will visit node number three then we will visit node number four based on following this left node and right more formula after that uh, we will visit the node again which is 5 and then we will be on the right side of the subtree so again on the right side of the subtree we will have to follow the same path left node and right but in this case since this right side of the subtree does not have any left children so we won't be able to update or traverse any left value but we would be able to traverse the node value so again we will travel the value 8 and then in the end we would traverse the value number 9 so in this case this is the path we are able to generate from this uh, given input binary search tree using this in order traversal and if you see this path this is actually increasing order and this path is actually sorted which is very good for us so suppose we are given the k is equal to 3 so if k kth value is 3 we can simply return 4 immediately if we are given k is equal to 5 then again we can return this value number 8 immediately as mentioned earlier and this is the approach we'll have to take to solve this problem optimally uh, now if you want to learn more about different kinds of tree traversal check out my video over here now let's see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big of n where n is the number of nodes that are present inside any given tree and if we see space complexity the space complexity is also going to be big of n uh, to accommodate our in order traversal there are actually two ways to solve this problem one is the recursive way and second one is the iterative way now since you know me i like the recursion better and even in the coding first of all we are going to create our recursive method called in order and that is going to return an array so i have created the in order method that takes in a root value and also that takes in an array list now first of all we are going to check the terminating case so if the given root is equal to null we can simply return uh, whatever the array value we have okay, if that is not the case first of all we are going to call the uh, in order function again and uh, we are actually going to call for the left subtree so we are going to call with the root dot left child and we are also going to pass in the value of whatever the array we already received uh, once that is done we are also going to add whatever the uh, node value we have so we are going to add the value for that particular root and uh, in the end we are also going to call the in order method again for the right side of the subtree because remember for the in order we are actually following the method of left node and right so with this time we are going to pass in the value of the right side right side and we are also going to pass in the value of the uh, whatever the array we have created now once this uh, method runs simply we need to return this array list that we have been creating okay now from the main method uh, first of all we are going to create a new array list called nums in order to populate this we are actually going to call our in order method and we are going to pass in the value of the root and we are also going to pass in the value of a new array list once that is done all we will have to do is uh, basically from this array list we simply have to return whatever the k minus one position element is because remember this k is actually one index meanwhile the array list we have been creating that is zero index so that is one tricky thing that we will have to take care of uh, let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty fast compared to a lot of other solutions it is also very efficient in terms of space complexity as well and i will be posting this in the comments so you can check it out the solution from there thank you hello friends we are soon employed by a fan company so let's stop lead coding till we get there today we are going to the lowest common ancestor of a binary search tree lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where i want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like linkedin facebook amazon apple google microsoft uber reddit and twitter so that's why i am paying my utmost attention i hope you also enjoy the video this is a lead code easy problem and basically first of all we are given the definition that what a lowest common ancestor means the lowest common ancestor is defined between any two nodes p and q 
such as that the lowest node in given tree uh, that has both p and q as the descendants where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself as well we are given a binary search tree and we are also given two nodes in that binary search tree and now we need to find the lowest common ancestor between those given two nodes uh, so let's try to understand this with this example basically we are given a binary search tree over here and we are also given the value of p and q to be 2 and 8 so subsequently if we see over here 2 is is located at this place and 8 is located at this place so the most common element or the immediate common or uh, common element that we can find is actually 6 in this case so that's why in this case we are going to return 6 as the answer because that is the lowest common ancestor between the node 2 and 8 uh, if we take one more example in this case so over here we are given this p is equal to 2 and q is equal to 4 so p is located at this 2 and q is actually located at this 4 now if you see in this case actually this 4 is a descendant of this uh, 2 so that's a given fact but we are remember we are also told that uh, we allow a node to be a descendant of itself as well so in this case uh, since this 2 and 4 so 4 is already a descendant of this 2 and 2 is already a descendant of its uh, self so in this case we will have to return this 2 as the answer and uh, that is what is given over here uh, we are given one more example where we are given only two nodes uh, for this given binary tree so the binary tree looks like this 2 and 1 and in this case we are given the value of this p to be 2 and q to be 1 so again we can see that in this case this 2 is already a descendant of itself and this 1 is actually a child of 2 so because of that 1 is also a descendant of this 2 so in this case we will again return this 2 to be answer now i hope that this makes uh, understanding the problem more easier and now let's see that what is the approach we are going to solve this problem Okay, first of all, I'm actually going to show you a bunch of different binary search trees and for all of those binary search trees, I have created some P and Q values and we are going to see that what was the lo uh, lowest common ancestor and why that was the lowest common ancestor, right? Now, we already know that important property of binary search tree and that is that for any given root value, everything on the left subtree of that binary search tree is actually less than that and everything on the right side of that binary search tree is greater than that. We already know this important property and we are going to take it to our advantage based on this given root value or any root value and with subsequent p and q values so if we see over here in this case the, the given value of p is actually 6 and if we start traversing through this binary search tree immediately we would find the 6 to be present over here so because we find the 6 to be present there can only be one possibility that this q or whatever the value of q that would either be on the left side of the subtree or right side of the subtree but we already find the value to be 6 over here so immediately we can return 6 to be the lowest common ancestor because anyways this value of q is uh, somewhere uh, supposed to fall inside the remaining binary search tree and in this case it is on the right side of the subtree so we will return 6 as the answer this makes sense right now the next example uh, again we are given the same thing we are given this value p to be 11 and q to be 9 so we know that this p is over here and q, q is over here 11 is going to be answered but let's uh, let's go ahead with our algorithm so first of all we'll start iterating over this root so the root value is actually 8 now for this root value we are going to compare it the, with the values of p and q right in this case the value of p and q both are actually greater than this 8 so because both are the greater than this 8 uh, we know based on the property of binary search tree that they are meant to fall somewhere on the right side of this given binary search tree so we will start iterating over the right side of the binary search tree to either find the values of p or q or if we can't find we will try to find the lowest common ancestor so when we start iterating over on the right side of the subtree we will ignore this left side of the subtree we don't care now this value is 11 this value is 11 is actually matches the value of this given p so immediately whether when we whenever we find a match with either p or q we can return that to be the lowest common ancestor immediately and in this case this is going to be the answer because uh, this 9 is meant to be somewhere below this binary search tree and in this case it is immediately right here present so we will return this 11 to be the answer which is the lowest common ancestor let's take one more example which is very similar so in this case this value is p, or p is equal to 3 and q is equal to 1 now again based on our algorithm we will start are traversing over this binary search tree now the first value we traverse whenever we compare its value with this p and q immediately we find a match with this uh, p to be over here so because we find a match over here do we really need to iterate over this given binary search tree well the answer is no why because we know that this q value is somewhere going to be down below and that is always going to be this descendant of this p 
so again we are going to return the values 3 as the lowest common ancestor uh, so far it makes sense that whenever either we identify the value of p and q we can return that to be the lowest common ancestor immediately but what happens if the case is little bit different so in this case i'm give i have given the value of p to be 6 and q to be 9 right again let's start with our algorithm so we'll start iterating over this binary search tree so first of all this value is actually 5 so because this value is 5 we'll try to see that okay we'll compare it with this value of p and q right so actually this 5 is less than p and less than q both p and q are greater than this root value so immediately it is meant to fall somewhere on the right side of the subtree so now we'll start iterating on the right side of the subtree we'll ignore these two because we don't need them now again this value is 7 so let's compare this 7 with this value of p and q well if we compare this 7 this 7 is actually greater than this p and this 7 is actually less than this q where right so we can conclude this this 7 actually falls somewhere in the middle because uh, on for the 7 on one side 6 is meant to be because 6 is less than 7 and somewhere on the other side 9 is meant to be because 9 is greater than the 7 based on the property of a binary search tree and if we utilize that to our maximum advantage we can immediately determine that the 7 is the common point between this 6 and 9 where on one side 6 resides so 6 resides on the left side over here and 9 resides on the right side of the subtree so on the right side of the subtree this is where 9 resides so we will return 7 to be the answer in this case and this is the approach we are going to follow so every single time for any given tree we will start iterating over that tree uh, and we are going to compare its value with p and q based on that we will de decide that whether we go on the left side of the subtree or right side of the subtree the moment we find a match between p and q uh, whatever the value we found if we find that we will return that to be the lowest common ancestor if we don't find a match and if we are in a situation where uh, this value of p is on the left side of this any root value and q is on the right side of any root value then immediately we can return that value to be the answer and this is the approach we are going to take to solve this problem and uh, this is the optimal way to solve it now there are two ways to solve this problem we can either solve it recursively or we can solve it iteratively now i like recursion better but iterate it iterative method will also work as expected in this case now for the recursion if we see the time and space complexity the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n because we will have to iterate over all the values in the worst case scenario and for the space complexity the space complexity is actually going to be big o of n as well because we will have to run maintain the runtime stack for this recursion method well uh, one good thing in iterative method is that for iterative method the time complexity is still going to be big o of n but for the space complexity we can actually use a constant space complexity for the iterative approach but in the coding because i am trying to improve my recursion i will be showing you the recursive method but just remember that iterative approach would be the better option in this, this case So we are going to use the same method as our recursive method and first of all in this method as an input we are given this root value we are given the value of p and q so first of all because we are, don't need to deal with this tree node we will actually have to deal with this integer value so we are i am going to initialize three variables uh, called the parent value uh, p value and q value and uh, i am going to assign the values based on this uh, whatever the input we get now we will have to check that whether this parent value uh, if that is the common point between p and q or either p and q falls on one side or other side of this binary tree if that is the case we will call our recursive method again so first of all we are going to check that if this p value and q value both are greater than uh, this parent value if that is the case which means we will have to iterate on the right side of the subtree so we are going to call the iterative method on the right side of the subtree if that is not the case we are going to check that whether this p value and q value both falls on the left side of this parent value uh, so again we are going to do that so if both p value and q value are less than the parent value which means we will have to search the left side of the subtree so we are going to do that okay if that is not the case which means that whatever this root info root value we are at that is either p or q value uh, which means we can return root immediately that's it uh, that should be working let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code 
and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions in terms of time complexity i already mentioned you that the for the space complexity this recursive solution is not the most optimal but i want to practice recursion so that's why i did that you can find an iterative solution that works as well and i would be sub uh, i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today actually we are going to learn about a new data structure and we are actually going to learn to implement a try or a prefix tree and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, Microsoft, Oracle, Apple, Facebook, Goldman Sachs, Uber and Bloomberg. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem and basically we are going to implement a try over here or a prefix tree. So first of all in the problem statement we are given the definition that what a try is and actually I am going to show you very eloquently that what a try is and how it works but let's uh, understand the definition first. Basically a try is a prefix tree which is a tree data structure that is used to efficiently store and retrieve keys in a data, data set of strings. Uh, there are a bunch of different applications of this try data structure and I'm going to go over all the applications soon as well. Now if we see that what is needed in this problem, basically we need to initialize a try object first of all. Then we need to create three different methods which are uh, mentioned over here. So first method is the insert method which does not return anything and basically we are only given the input as a string word and we need to insert this word in, inside this new try object that we are initializing. After doing that, we could be given a search method where again as an input we are given a string called word and we need to return true or false which means that whether if this word exists inside this try object that we have created we need to return true otherwise we need to return false and there is also one more method where again we are returning true or false uh, and the name of method is starts with where we are actually given a string and the name of the string is prefix but basically we need to check that whether this prefix actually exist as a part of any existing word inside this try object and if that is the case we need to return true if that is not the case we need to return false so his, here is an example that we are given so suppose we are given as an input where actually uh, first of all we are creating the try we are inserting this inserting some word we are searching for some words we are uh, doing the start with operation and uh, this is the explanation so basically we initialize the try object as mentioned then first of all we insert the word apple so okay so currently apple exists over here now again we search for that whether apple exists or not and because it exists we return true as the answer again we search for with the word app but the thing is remember so far we have only inserted the word apple app does not exist as a whole word so that's why we, we return false again we search for starts with method for this word app and remember because this apple this app is actually a prefix of this apple so we return true in this case and so on and so forth we can do bunch of different op uh, operations so this is what is needed now let's understand what a try is okay so first of all let's try to understand that what a try actually is Basically, a try is a tree-like data structure, but it's a little bit different and a different variant of a tree. Now, if we know for any single tree, the basic properties are that every single tree has a root node. Now, this root node has some subsequent children nodes. There could be n number of different children, and those children can have some children of their own, and their links actually found some meaningful relationship. So that is what we are going to use uh, to generate this try but we are actually going to generate this try to store different string values uh, per character that is the important property per character. So it makes us easier to understand or find different words or different strings and there are n number of applications of a try. Let's try to understand try with some example. So first of all as any different tree we are actually going to have a root node right. Now suppose for this root node what we are trying to do is we are of course we are trying to add some different string value. So let's take a string value. Suppose the first string we are trying to add is the, actually the word uh, fang. So if we take this word fang first of all we will have to add the word f because remember I already told you we are going to do it character by character then we will add a a n and g we are going to add it in this sequence so in order to do that logically speaking for this root root is going to remain common but thing is first word we will have to add is fan 
but the thing is first we will check that whether is there any children of this root node which is actually f if that is the case we are actually going to leverage that but this does not have any children so if this does not have any children we are actually going to new, create a new children f now again with this f there is no children that is a so again we are going to create a new children then again we are going to create a new children and then we are going to add the values of n and g as well after adding this we have actually created a root inside this try data structure which represents this word fang that we were originally trying to uh, create after creating that we will have to find some way to identify that this fang word has actually ended so what we are going to do is we are actually going to create a special character or a special node over here which we are going to denote as an end node which defines that the word has actually ended over here right after doing that let's try to add one more word so suppose rather than fang we are trying to add the character mang so let's try to again add mang over here now for this mang first of all we are going to check that whether this m exists as one of the children of, of this root node so m is also no children so first of all we are going to add m, m and then we are going to add subsequent characters and we are going to link them with this uh, path after that in the end we are actually going to add a special character and denote that the word has actually ended over here so let's do a quick recap basically what we have done so far is we have actually created two separate branches uh, where if we go depth first search diving in those branches we would actually find those subsequent words uh, in those particular branches so it makes a uh, pretty efficient for us to identify any string and to see that whether it exists or not and predict that what the person is going to copy now suppose we are i'm trying to add the next word fan now for the adding this next word fan what we are going to do is first of all we are going to check f exist or not so f exist over here so because f exist we are actually going to leverage that so now we are not going to add any entry over here again this a also exists as one of the children of f so again we are not going to add any, any entry over here now this n so n is not a children of this original a so we are actually going to create an entry over here so we have we will create an entry over here uh, and we are actually going to name it as n and now since this word ends over here we are actually going to create this end node over here so again remember if we go depth per search in this direction we will actually be able to find this word fan and that is the whole purpose of a try now let's try to add one more word uh, which is man oh, sorry m a a ma so if we try to add this word ma so first m also exists over here a also exists and a also exists so because these three exist we are actually not going to uh, break this link and create this end word over here or we are not going to do that uh, actually we are going to keep this as it is because this m a a is actually a prefix of this original word mang that we have already added to our try and that is why a try is also called a prefix tree so now the word makes sense that why a try is called a prefix tree and basically this is what we are trying to implement there are a bunch of different applications of a try and let's see some of the applications that are really cool in real life uh, real life world so before we start implementing the method first of all let's understand that what are different applications of a try so applications like autocomplete where you type something and it automatically gets completed or understood by by that particular product uh, that is implemented using try uh, so features like google chrome amazon where you try type few words and then it automatically understands that what you are trying to do and automatically gives you the answer uh, that is implemented using that uh, all the spell checks or all the dictionary related mechanisms they are also implemented using some versioning of a try games like word search word puzzle wordle they are also implemented using a versioning of a try and uh, features like predictive text search or expected text search that you type something it automatically expects that what could be the next potential words you typically you see that in youtube google all the time uh, they are also implemented using tries so these are only few but very powerful uh, applications of a try and there are hundreds of them i haven't mentioned them so that's why try is important to understand now let's move back to our question and start implementing those three methods so first method they are asking us to implement is an insert method where we are not returning anything but we are inserting different strings into our try so for this example we are actually going to implement 
these four different types of strings into our try and uh, we will see that what would be the logic behind it now as mentioned earlier that every try actually has a root node so again with our try we are also going to have a root node now from this root node the idea we are going to use is that whatever string we are trying to insert first of all we will check that whether the first word that we are trying to implement or the first character we are trying to implement if that is present as one of the children of the existing uh, root node or not if it is children of that particular root node we would keep on branching for that particular uh, child and keep on updating the number of characters that we are trying to implement if it does not exist we will actually create a, uh, create a new node or a new branch and we will add that entire word into that branch now as mentioned earlier the moment we reach to the end of that particular node we will actually have to create an end node to denote that this word actually ends over here so let's start implementing what is being asked over here so first we are trying to implement the word apple so a does not exist as any of the children of this root node currently it has no children so we will have to create a new node so first we are going to create a new node for apple okay so let me create a new node a and then i will keep on appending all the remaining characters and after adding all the word because this word ends at this e I am actually going to create a special node and I am going to denote it as an end node so that say that is to for us to understand that this word actually ends over here and we don't need to move any further okay now next word we are trying to implement is g and also remember one thing I forgot to, tool, to tell you that this root can have potential 26 different children right uh, and this 26 different children can have 26 different children of their own so the mechanism we are going to implement to find that whether a node contains any particular children or not is actually going to be used based on some key value mechanism and because it's a key value mechanism uh, the whole operation of searching that whether any node or anything if that is a part of any children of that particular node or not that is being done in constant time so that it helps us understand uh, helps us to maintain the uh, consistency and speed of our data structure now let's move back to adding the word google to our try so for the word google we do not have any uh, children that is starts with g so we are also going to create a new node over here or new branch over here where first uh, character is g and then we will add all the remaining characters as previously mentioned uh, at the end of the word we are going to create an end node okay now things will become a little bit under, uh, interesting with this word amazon so for this word amazon uh, when we start checking that whether this a is a children of this root node or not we find that a is already a children so we will keep on updating the value over here that okay we have already find a word or a character that is already a children and then we will keep on moving to the next character so first this a is already present so we ignore that now next character we will we want to find is m so for this m we will try to see that whether this a contains any children that starts with m but the thing is currently this a only contains one children that starts with a p and not m so we will have to create a new branch over here so let's create a new branch so new branch starts with m and then we will add all the remaining word characters over here okay and now the ne the next word we are trying to implement is amazing for the amazing uh okay we already have a children of this root that starts with a so we have taken care of this m is also present as one of the children okay now a is also present as one of the children of this m okay so that is that is also good now this z is also present as over here now for this i i is actually not present as one of the children of this z so we will actually create create a new branch over here uh, that starts with i and then we will add this n and g over here and in the end we will create or we will add the end node over here and now we have actually inserted these four characters as or uh, these four strings into our try and if you see uh, we can find each one of them by going in dfs motion in any particular branch so first of all this gives us the value google this gives us apple this gives us amazing uh, sorry amazon and this gives us amazing so that is how tries typically work now let's move on to the next method that is being asked so for the search method for our try we will be actually given a word as the input and uh, we will have to check that if that word exists inside our given try we will have to return true if it does not exist we will have to return false so let's start implementing the same method and actually we are going to use the same try that we have created we have created okay so let's use the same try that we have created earlier and we will try to see that whether these four strings are uh, do they exist inside this given uh, try or not 
so let's understand the logic behind it uh, well if the string exists uh, basically all we will have to do is first of all we will check that okay whether the first character if that is the ch one of the children of this root node or not if that is the children we would keep on checking its children for this next subsequent words and try to complete this entire word if we are able to complete this entire word without this uh, try breaking or not able to find the children if we reach to the end we can conclude that this word exists if we cannot come to the end we will conclude that this node does not exist so first of all let's try to see in this example so for the first word is a so a exists over here as one of the children so we will ignore this one now next word is m m also exists so we will again ignore this one the next one is a again this word exists now z i n g uh, they all exist in this particular fashion so this word amazing exists inside this given try so because it exists we will return true as the answer in this case right now let's try to search for this word good now for this word good the first character is g so first character is g present over here so okay we are good up until this point next character is o o is also present again o is also present so we can ignore first three characters of, of this good now for this next o we do not have a children that starts with value d so because of that uh, we do not have any new branch over here that starts with d so we can actually conclude that the word good does not exist in this case and uh, because it does not exist we will return false over here okay now let's uh, try to search for the word googler so again for this word googler okay g also exists o exists o exists g exists l exists and e exists okay up until this point all the words exist but when we try to search for the next word we actually encounter that okay this is the end node of our try or of our uh, dfs search for this particular direction so because it is the end word we will actually return false over here because this word has not been completely searched because it does not exist inside our try and we are actually able to do it pretty quickly and pretty efficiently okay so now next word is app so let's try to see that whether this word app exists inside our uh, try or not so first of all we check for this word a a exists over here then this word p p also exists and p also exists right so we are up good up until this point and our mind will say that okay because this word exists we need to return true but thing is that is not the case the idea we are trying to do in this search method is that we are trying to see that whether the whole word that is given as the input exists as only a word inside this given try but for this app if we try to see the next node the next node is actually the s l and e so there are still some characters Characters that exist inside this given uh, B DFS path that we are traversing and the next node is actually not the end node so because the next node is not the end node and there are still some more nodes that exist this app is actually a prefix of original word apple but not the whole word as it is so that's why in this case we need to return false as well and this is the important thing that is differentiating between this method search method and the next method we are going to implement now if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity for this method is actually going to be big of n where n is the number of uh, characters that are present that we are trying to search in any given word if we see space complexity this for the space complexity we are actually not using any additional space so that is going to be the constant space complexity for this case which is pretty efficient in my opinion So now let's understand our starts with method and we are also going to use the same try that we have created before right and we are going to see that whether the the words that starts with these characters are they present inside our given try or not so again this is very similar to the search method uh, where we are going to iterate over word by word or character by character for any given word and we will see that whether that is present inside our try or not if that is present we can return true if that is not present we will return false so let's see that in action so first of all uh, we have this character a so a is already one of the children of this root node so okay we are good at, up until this point then we have m m is also a children over here and then we have a so a is also a children of this one so we can conclude that because this word ended uh, we do not have any more and things to search for and all of the characters they were present inside this given try we would actually return true in this case they are saying that the word that starts with a m a is actually present as one of the uh, children or one of the branches of this try now let's try to search for this word apk so a exist and p exist but thing is for this p we do not have any children that starts with k so because of that this k is not present uh, we can actually return false in this case uh, saying that uh, we do not have a word that starts with apk as the prefix 
inside our try and remember because we are searching through prefix that is why this is also called prefix tree so yeah mind blown right my mine as well now let's try to search the word good well there is google but there is not good but i think is google is pretty good yeah so that's why it's one of my dream companies but let, let's try to search that so okay this is g o o so g o o is present over here but this d is not present as one of the children of this o so because of that we will also return false in this case okay now we have this word apple so apple is actually the entire word that is present over here and if you look at it we do have a word that starts with the word apple uh, even though it ends at apple but the thing is also it starts with apple right so and the name of the method is actually starts with so why don't why should not we return true in this case so this will also become true that okay word that starts with apple is present inside our given try and that is the logic we are going to use to implement the starts with method again very similar to the search method just a little bit different variations uh, now if we try to see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is also going to be big of n that is where n is the number of characters that are presented inside any word that we are trying to search if we see space complexity the space complexity is also going to be big o of uh, one or constant space complexity because we are not stor storing anything in our text stack this problem is asking us to implement insert search and starts with method but before implementing these three methods first of all we will have to define that what a try node is this is only a try class so we, i would be creating a separate class called try node now in this try node class first of all let's go over some basic methods that we are going to use that will enable us to do a lot of things uh, first of all we have defined a finite number of cases r which is 26 because any single node can only have up to 26 uh, distinct children because each children represents a character inside the alphabet now uh, every single try node has a certain set of links and links are defined by the children of that particular node uh, we also created some more methods so let's go over them uh, so one method is contains key method where we pass in a character and we get the answer that whether any particular link or any particular node does that contain that particular character as one of its children or not and we can get the answer in a constant time complexity because remember we are using array indexing uh, and the in maximum po possibility of indexing can be 26 and we can get the answer immediately same we are uh, we have a method get where we provide the character and we get the answer that whatever the value of that particular character is inside any of the children of any try node we also have a method put where we provide the value of a character and the node we are trying to put it as and we also have set end and is end method uh, that is to define that whenever we run out of uh, words that we need to put in in any single try block or any single try branch uh, the last node is going to be is na is end node and we will mark its value to be true uh, so now let's start implementing the try node so first of all we will be we will have to create a try node uh, root so let's do that now since we have our root node uh, first of all for this public try method uh, we are going to initialize the root after doing that first of all let's start working on our insert method so for our insta insert method uh, we are going to have a root node now we are going to iterate over the given input word we will define that what is the current character we are at now first of all we will have to check that whether the given node we have if that contains that uh, particular key or not so if the given node does not contain that key we will actually have to create a new entry over here so we will use our node dot put uh, method and inside that we are going to pass in the value of the current character and we are going to pass in the we are going to create a new try node for that and then we are going to update the nodes value and once this loop ends basically the last node we are at we will have to set its value to be the end node so we are going to mark its value to be the set end value and uh, which would basically so it defines that this is the last node uh, before we work on the search and starts with method remember both search and starts with method they are pretty similar to each other so we are actually going to create a supporting method uh, called search prefix once again we are going to initialize the node to be the root node and now we are going to iterate over the given word so now we are going to check that if the current node does it contains the given character or not if it contains the given character uh, we can actually uh, set the value of node if it is not present we simply need to return null and that's it 
and if we somehow reach to the end of this loop we can simply return whatever the node we have we are at now uh, from this our uh, search method basically what we are going to do is first of all we are going to initialize our try node and we are going to pass in the value of the word now we simply have to return that whether the current node we get in the return and if it is not null and it is end we can simply return true and same thing we are going to do for our starts with method so again for our starts with method we are again going to call the search prefix method and uh, basically all we will have to check that uh, whatever the return value we get if that is not equal to null if that is not equal to null we can simply return true and uh, that should be it let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions and it is also very uh, much efficient in terms of space complexity the thing is I was not able to come up with the solution on my own. I actually had to use a lot from the solution tab. So I just want to make it clear. Uh, so yeah, everyone has to go through it and uh, I will be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there. Thank you. Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fine company. So let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do design, add and search words data structure lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, ByteDance, Twitter, Uber and Lyft so that's why I am paying my utmost attention I hope you also enjoy the video so this is a lead code medium problem and as the name suggests that we are actually designing a data structure where for this data structure we have to support that we can add new words to this data structure and if given any string we, we can actually find the previously added words uh, or strings as well. So we are being asked to implement the word dictionary class. Now in the word dictionary class first of all we will need to initialize the word dictionary object and then we need to create two different methods. First method is add word method that, that takes in a string word as an input which being done it adds the word to our data structure um, that we can use to match it later. And then there is a boolean method uh, called search where again we provide a string word as an input and that returns true or false if that word has been previously added or not. Uh, we are also given one, one more condition that for the search method there could be dots provided as inputs where we can conclude dot to be any letter. So if we are given the word something like bad that is already uh, already being added and then we are asked to search for the word using b dot d uh, actually these two words we can consider same because this dot we can consider it to be a. So let's try to understand this with an example. Uh, over here we are given a bunch of different add word, add word and search word mechanisms and uh, this is the explanation provided. So basically first of all we initialize the object word dictionary. Now for that uh, first we add the word bad, dad, mad. Uh, we all uh, we add all three these three words. Now first of all we search using pad. So pad is not present so we return false. Then bad is present because we have previously added it. Uh, then we are also given a word which is dot ad. So this dot can actually mean anything uh, and if we see we already have a word like bad and dad that both and even mad that all three of them they actually match with the string so we can return true in this case as well and we are also given one more search criteria where we are only given b dot dot which means for these two dots we can conclude any other word and since we already have a word bad added uh, we can conclude these two to be similar and we need to return true in this case. So before we start the solution first let's understand that what a try is uh, well uh, if you want to check the full explanation you can check out my previous video over here uh, now let's move back over here so basically a try is actually a form of a tree where as any given tree uh, uh, it has a root node now this root node can have many subsequent children and each children can have some children of their own uh, and based on that we actually use try to it search store and iterate over different strings uh, and for any given strings we actually use it uh, character by character to store distinct values inside this given try and based on the based on per character we actually store it in a manner where it becomes pretty uh, fast for us to find that whether any particular parent node contains some character as one of its children or not and then we iterate in some particular fashion uh, in DFS fashion to find uh, any words.
so suppose these four are the strings we are trying to add so let's uh, initialize our try data structure so first of all we are actually going to have a root variable now for this root variable we are going to store all of these values one by one so first let's store the value hello as mentioned that for any given string we are actually going to go character by character uh, so first of all we are going to take the character h and we are going to see that does this root node has a child that is actually starts with h it does not so we are actually going to create a new node over here and this node starts with h now we are going to add all the values of uh, subsequent characters because they don't exist so i'm going to add uh, append e uh, l l o and after adding all of these values actually we are going to have a, an end variable that denotes that this word has actually ended over here so so far if we iterate in this direction in this given try we can actually form the word hello and when we reach to this o we can actually we will actually encounter a special node that denotes that this is actually the end node and if the whenever we identify that we can conclude the word has actually ended now uh, let's add this word hi so if we want to add word hi basically first of all we will check that whether this h exists or not so h already exists as one of the children of this root so we do not need to create a separate branch for this one but the thing is for this particular h i does not exist as one of its children so we are actually going to create a new branch over here i and we are going to denote that this is this represents this word h and then because this word ends over here we are actually going to denote an end node over here uh, let's add one more word uh, that is pop so if we want to add pop again p does not exist so we are going to add or we are going to create a new branch and we are going to add all of these values and we are going to add the end node now this next word is pond so again we are going to use the same methodology so p and o exist as the children so first two characters we are done with now from here we will have to create a new branch so we will do that and after that we will add our end branch and this is the logic we are going to use to implement our uh, insert or add method to add different strings inside our word implement data structure and this is the logic we are going to use that first of all we are going to check that any character exists as the children of the root or not if it exists we are going to leverage that particular branch if it does not exist we are going to create a new branch and then we will keep on making separations and based on that uh, things becomes pretty easy for us to find different words Okay, so for our search method, suppose this is the try that we have actually created and these are the words we have added. Uh, let me quickly go over them. So first word is pen. If you look at this direction, we have the word pen, then we have the pot. So P is common. So then there is a branch out and we get the word pot as well. Same we have cat, cars and bed in the similar sequence. And uh, these are the words we are trying to search. So couple of words are just regular words. Uh, then I have added some examples with the dots in it. So because they are more complicated ones, so we can understand that. So let's start, let's quickly start to go over and uh, see that what would be our search policy for this given uh, try that we have created. So for uh, for this character pot, first, first letter is P. So from this root, we are going to see that does there a children that contains the character P? And yes, we have a child that contains the character P. So based on that, uh, we will keep you know, keep on iterating in that direction. So next character is O. So we have O as well. And the next character is T. So we have T as well. Now we don't care about this end node because as long as uh, we are able to generate the word that we were given, we are good up until this point. So over here, we will actually return true to be the answer that yes, this word is present inside the try that we have created. Uh, second word is pots. So again for the pots we uh, up until this pot we are going to go in the same direction but this s is not present as one of the children of this pot uh, and because we encounter an end node over here so we can uh, drop out immediately and we can return false in this case that yeah we don't have any uh, character that matches the word pots now uh, this is a little bit interesting example so for this dot ar the policy we are going to use is that whenever we encounter a dot to be a character we will actually have to iterate over every single possible root using this dot to be the character and see that can we make this ar to be part of that sequence or not so let's uh, quickly do that and let me clean this up a bit for this dot ar the strategy we are going to use is for this particular dot we are going to consider it uh, that every single child of this root can be used over here and then we will try to see that whether uh, is there any place where second character is actually a so first we go down this path okay so p we consider p as dot right then we check that okay this is e and this is not a so we cannot go on this path 
okay now we backtrack now we keep this p to be dot now again we try to repeat the same process this is a and this is o so again this is not the path we are going to choose this that is going to lead us to this answer uh, we come back now okay we are at this position again we check this a uh, child so this child is actually c we consider c to be the dot okay now from the c the next character is actually a and all over here the next character is also a so that is good good sign for us so now we can continue in that direction so now from this a we will try to see that is there a child that is actually r and yes from this a we also have a child that is r and since we reach to the end of this word we can return true in this case that yes this dot a r is present inside this try that we created okay so yeah that's a wonderful news uh, now let's focus on the next example so next example is dot dot t so for the dot dot t actually we are we will have to branch out even more so for the second dot dot t what we are going to do is again we are going to repeat the same strategy we will have to go over every single child that is possible so first we'll consider this p to be the first dot uh, so this dot is this p okay now from this p we will also consider uh, two child to be separate dots so for both the childs, uh, okay, this is going to be the first dot. Uh, so we are good up until this point, but this value is actually not T, this is N. So we will have to backtrack. From this E, we do not have any child. So we will again backtrack and we will come back to this P to be one dot. Now from this P, we still have one more root that we haven't considered. So we will consider this O to be the second dot. And from this O, we actually have the last character T present. And uh, that matches the string dot dot T. So if we go down this path, uh, we will be able to generate this word and uh, that's why we will also return true in this case as well and the same thing we are going to repeat for this dot ey uh, strategy so for this dot ey uh, what we are going to do is first of all we are going to consider this to be the dot we will see okay this is e so that is good but we this is not y so again we cannot go down this path uh, again this is dot this is not the path this is not the path this is not the path so this dot ey is actually not present inside this entire try block that we have created so over here we will return false but before returning false we will actually check every single possible route to see that whether we can find a match or not okay so that is how we are actually going to implement the search mechanism uh, basically the only tricky part is to take care of the dot values apart from that it's pretty simple now let's talk about time and space complexity so for the add function the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n that depending on the number of characters that are presented inside the input and also for the space complexity it's also going to be big o of n uh, depending on the uh, size of the input for the search mechanism things become a little bit tricky uh, over here the time complexity is actually going to be big o of 26 times n why 26 times n because remember for any given dot there can be 26 child of any particular root element that we might have to iterate over and again oh, in the bottom we might have to keep on repeating the same process right so basically the maximum time and space complexity we might have to go over is going to be uh, n times 26 but since 26 is a finite number we can also consider this to be big o of n only okay and for the space complexity it's also going to be the same it's going to be big o of 26 to the power of n so for this problem we are being asked to implement three things word dictionary add word and search method but the thing is before that we will actually have to define a try node so i'm going to create a separate class for to defining a try node where uh, every single try node has a different set of children and uh, we can easily quickly look up those children because uh, we are actually using hash map to define them okay now from our main method first of all we are going to create a new try node so now to implement our word dictionary first of all we are actually going to create an instance of this try now for this add word method first of all we'll have to create a node uh, so we are going to create a try node uh, we are going to run a for loop across the given word but if the current node if that does not contain any children with this character then we will have to create a new entry uh, inside our node and if the entry exists for this given uh, character uh, we are actually going to go to the next element and in the end we are going to define node dot word to be true so before we start our search method we are actually going to create a helper method called search in node uh, that is going to take uh, the input word and the try node as the input and that is going to help us to iterate over the given try node uh, so first of all we are going to create a for loop to iterate over this given word and inside this given word we are going to iterate over character by character so i'm also going to create a new character variable 
so first of all we are going to check that if the given node or does its children contains this word or not if it does not contain then we are going to check that whether the given character is dot or not and if that is the dot then we might have to iterate over all the subsequent characters of this node once we determine that the children does not contain this character ch we are going to check that whether the ch is actually a dot or not if that is dot then we are going to run a for loop across all the children for every single uh, character value and then we are going to define a new try node called child and basically we are going to call this search in node method iteratively for the next character in that particular word because remember we are already eliminating the dot character and uh, providing its child as the try node and we will keep on repeating this the uh, we will keep on iterating this process and we are going to return true if that is not the case and if this given ch character is not a dot then uh, in that case we can return false immediately uh, somehow uh, this ch is actually a child of this node if that is the case then uh, we simply need to iterate over the next value inside this given node and in the end we simply need to return that whether the node dot word is present or not and remember we are storing this node dot word value inside our uh, this add word method as well so the moment we identify a matching word it would return true otherwise it would return false now from this our search method all we will have to do is we simply need to call the uh, recursive search in node method that we have created and as the input we are going to provide the value of the word and we are also going to initialize a new try node or we are also going to provide the try node that we initialized earlier and that's it uh, let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code okay seems like our solution worked as expected um it was not the fastest solution in terms of time complexity but in terms of space complexity it was pretty efficient i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you hello friends we are still not employed by a fang company so let's not stop lead coding till we get there Today we are going to do word search to lead code problem and if we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question there are companies like Amazon, Uber, Microsoft, Google, Snapchat, Facebook, Apple, Twitter, TikTok, Bloomberg, Spotify, Twitch and Airbnb. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. So this is the lead code hard problem and basically we are given an m cross n matrix of characters now and we are also given a different list of string called words now we need to return all the words that are present on the given board we are also given one more thing that each word must be constructed from the letters that are adjacent to each other so and we are also given the definition that what are adjacent cells are basically any cells that are horizontally or vertically neighboring to each other we can consider them to be a part of the consecutive sequence series and we can use them to create words so let's try to understand this with an example over here over here we are given a four cross four matrix and for this matrix we are told that these these are the list of words we need to check that whether they are present inside this given matrix or not so if we try to just look at this example basically we can see that this first word oath is actually present over here where uh, o a t and h they are uh, creating or forming this word and if you see they are all sequentially adjacent cells to each other so that's why we can use them to form this words and see whether it's present or not so in the answer first of all we are going to add the word oath uh, as one of the answer then if we look at the answer we can also find this word uh, eat to be present so e a t a that is present in this manner and again though this is on the left side this is not the conventional way to write it but still based on the adjacent cells we can actually form this word eat and that's why this eat is also going to be part of the answer so we will add eat in the answer as well now for this two p e a p and rain these two are not present inside this given matrix so we will not include them in the answer and this is the answer we will have to return so basically it is one kind of a word search game or word search puzzle so that is why the name is word search 2 and this is the little bit of advanced version so first we'll see that what is going to be like a basic very trivial approach and then we will try to improvise using a different set of data structures 
okay so most basic idea we are going to have is that we will start iterating over all of the characters that are present inside this m cross n matrix and then for every single character we are going to see that whether that matches with any of the starting words or not if we find a potential match then we will try to find the subsequent character and the neighbors of that particular character to see if we are able to generate any exact word or not and the moment we do that we will actually put it in a new variable called answer and that is how we will be able to generate our answer so let's try to see this in action so first character in this case is x so x matches with this character over here in the in the given set of words so next we will have to see that whether any neighbor of x is actually y or not neighbor of x is actually h and a we do not find y over here so because we do not find y over here this x does not lead to anywhere so we okay we can mark this as visited that does not lead to any answer next character is h so h matches with this first character uh, and then we will have to see that whether b exists as one of the neighbors of h and b also exists as one of the neighbors of h and then the subsequent character o also exists as one of the neighbors of b so in this case this hbo is actually a complete word we are able to make based on subsequent characters that are pro present adjacent to each other inside this given matrix and because of that we are going to create a new variable called the answer and in the answer we are going to add the the value hbo over here now we will start iterating over this a so again a is the starting point over here and next character b and c we are able to generate this pair using sub sequentially iterating over and uh, if we see over here we can also generate this a b c in this fashion now this character is y so again y is not part of starting character of any other word so we cannot do anything about this our uh, next character is again c that we have already visited so we don't need to visit this and next character is z z again is not the starting point of any of these characters so in this case this is the answer we will we are going to have and we, we can return this one this solution works as expected there are no issues with this one but if you just see we only have a 3 by 3 matrix and for every single character in the worst case scenario we might have to iterate over every single word uh, and check that whether it matches the starting word or not we can maybe simplify using a hash map uh, but the thing is this is still going to lead to a very bad solution in terms of time complexity this is going to be disaster for because for every single character we might have to iterate over every single word that there is and uh, once we find a match then we will have to iterate over all the neighbors of that particular character as well so that leads to nowhere so let's try to see that where we can find a better time complexity and uh, the solution to achieve a better time complexity is actually using a new data structure called try now I have already extensively worked on try and you can find all of those solutions over here. Uh, check out this video if you want to learn that what a try is and what are its applications. Now let's see that how we are going to use try in this case to improve our uh, performance. Okay. So the previous example we see basically what we are doing is we were iterating over every single character and then we were trying to see that whether that character matches the first element or not and sequentially we will have to check every single word that was present and if we find a potential match then we will have to check all the neighbors to see if the next consecutive element is present or not and that was the major reason that why we were having a disastrous time complexity so in order to improve that if we can find a some way to eliminate this uh, checking procedure that for every single character we might have to look up all the elements or all the words that are present because imagine if there are million words present we might have to check million times and then that is going to be very disastrous uh, the idea we are going to use is that whatever the words that we are given we are actually going to convert these into a try and because we are converting them into a try for any character searching that whether it is the starting point of any word or not becomes pretty easy for us and we can actually do it in uh, nearly constant time uh, because in the try it is very fast and efficient to find that whether any word exists or not and if it exists uh, it is very easy for us to iterate over that particular word or not so first of all let me quickly create a try block based on these three words uh, the try block is going to look like this so based on the words that we were previously given we actually created a try block and now using this try block we are going to make things pretty easy for ourselves basically we are going to iterate over in the same fashion for uh, the given matrix but this time we all we will have to see is to look up in this try that whether the current character if that is any children of this given root node or not and if that is the case we will keep on iterating so first we find this character to be e e is not part of any children so we can we can ignore that next one is f f is actually part of a children 
so okay now we have found f to be part of the children now we will have to see that what is the next character in the in this uh tri block so this next character is a so we will have to see that whether any neighbors of this f is actually a or not so we are h we will have to check on three sides and we find a match over here that this is a okay now again next character is a again this neighbor is actually a okay now this character is n so again neighbor of this a is n present over here and again the next character is g so g is also present over here and since we have reached to the end node uh, inside our try because of that uh, we can conclude that the whole world was actually present inside this given uh, matrix and we can return true in this case and we will add it to our answer list so inside the answer list the first word we are going to add is fang that uh, is present inside this given matrix so see how easy it is for us to find this these things and okay now the next character is r r is not children of uh, any of these root nodes uh, next one is t t is also not a children l is not a children these th these are all visited now this g g is actually a children so now it becomes easy now we will have to start iterating over okay so we are at this position g now the next element is o o o the next element is o and o is also a neighbor over here okay so which is good now the next element is o again o is a neighbor over here so which is good now this next element is g g is also a neighbor of this o right so we are good up until this point now we have to find this l now if we look at this g we do not find l to be a neighbor of this g so because of that we will actually have to roll back and we cannot move forward uh, with this path so now we will be have we would have visited this g and we that did not lead us to anywhere so again we will start with our routine uh, procedure okay now this next character is o o is not starting point of anything t is also not starting point of anything g is we can we have already used it now this is again g so again g is the starting point of this one next character is o o is present over here next character is o o is also neighbor of this one next character is g g is neighbor of this one next character is l l is neighbor of this one and next character is e e is the first character and because we reached to the end character over here we can conclude that google is also present inside this given matrix and we will add it to our answer so we will add one, one other entry called google okay and now next uh, again this character is l so l does not lead to any children of this root node and f does not lead to any children of this root node so in the answer we are going to return this uh, fang and google to be the answer and this uh, this would be the most optimal way to solve this problem remember because we used a try block it things becomes much more faster for us and we can immediately look up that whether any single character that leads to an answer or not okay now let's do the tricky part we will have to do the time and space complexity analysis so for the time complexity analysis it's actually a little bit tricky the first thing that is a given fact is that we will have to iterate over every single character that is present inside this given m cross n matrix so that's a given fact suppose that the total number of cells that are present are actually m so now okay we already know that that is whatever the time complexity is going to be the factor of m now for this particular m imagine that for any particular character what is the maximum work we will have to do in the worst case scenario well the maximum work we can do have to, we will have to do in the worst case scenario is that any particular character suppose this f is this f matches this character that is present now for whenever we find a potential match we will have to look for the next element in all three directions of that particular word so suppose this o has we was a potential match we will have to iterate over all four directions in any given case so for any single cell we might have to iterate over in the all four directions and for all four directions the number of traversal that we will have to do for each one of them would depend on the next three or the next remaining three characters because remember for this google suppose we find a match this o to be a match now the moment we find this o to be a match again we find this o to be a match so now because we find this to be a match we do not have to look for this particular element we will have to look at the remaining three positions so then we will have to for any single character we will have to look in the four directions and for all the subsequent elements we will have to look in the remaining three directions and that we will have to do depending on the length of that particular word so for the remaining three elements we will have to iterate over to the length of that so that's why three to the power of l minus one and why minus one because for this 
first character we are actually looking looking in the worst case scenario in all four directions and for all the subsequent length parameters so suppose for this particular fang for this f we might have to look in four directions and for this a we only have to look in the remaining three directions because one adjacent cell is already f so that we we do not have to look at so this is going to be the time complexity so if i write the final time complexity it's actually going to be big o of m uh, into 4 times 3 to the power of l minus 1 and that is the final time complexity this is a very difficult time complexity analysis uh, so yeah it gives you an idea that why this problem is pretty popular if we see space complexity that is pretty simple space complexity depends on the total number of words that are present so suppose we sum that up to big o of n where m is the total number of characters that are present in the or initial word list uh, so after doing this time and space complexity analysis now let's move on to the coding Before we implement our solution, we are actually going to create our class try node. In the class solution, we are going to define couple of global variables. Now inside the find words method, first of all, we are going to initialize our try block and we are going to add all the words to our try block. After creating the try node, now we are going to start working on backtracking, uh, starting with each cell in the board. So first of all, let's create uh, the board variable. And now we are going to initialize couple of loops to iterate over this full board uh, matrix. So now for every single position inside this given matrix, we are going to check that whether that is actually any of the children of this root try node that we have created. And if that is the case, then we will create a helper method called backtracking where we are going to iterate over the, all the adjacent cells of that particular row and column position and also uh, that particular entire DFS traversal for that particular uh, branch inside our try node. After this loop ends, basically we should have populated our answer inside this answer uh, variable that we have created. So we can simply return that. And now let's create our backtracking method. So this is going to be our recursive method. Uh, first of all, we are going to define a couple of variables. First of all, we are going to check that whether the current node is actually a word or not. If that is a word, we can immediately add it to a result. Okay, if that is not the case, we will have to start doing our traversal. So how we are going to do our traversal? Remember, whatever the current row and column is, we cannot use the same word again. So we are actually going to mark this as hash in a way for us to identify that uh, that is the node we have already visited. Now for any given row and column, we will have to iterate over all of its neighbors. So we are going to use couple of variables to our advantage. Now with the help of row and column offset, it becomes pretty easy for us to iterate over all the neighbors of any given node. So now we are going to run a for loop and we are going to iterate over all the neighbors of given row and column position. First, we check that whether our new row and new column, if they are going out of bounds or not. That is the case. We just simply ignore that. Otherwise, if we are at the correct neighbor, we need to check that whether that neighbor is actually subsequent character uh, that we have already stored in our try or not. And if that is the case, we are going to call our backtracking method again. Now, our, after our exploration ends, basically we will have to uh, put back this hash to its original position and that should be it there is one more optimization we can we can do and that is to incrementally remove the leaf nodes which means that whenever we identify that the current nodes children if that is empty then basically we can just remove that from our parent that should be it let's try to run this code We will also have to update the value of the node in the else condition. Okay, seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And our code runs pretty efficiently. I would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there. Thank you.